break, commercial break. Are you looking for an advantage in your competition? Well, Car Class has done the hard work for you. We've travelled to your racetracks to give you the inside knowledge. So what does Car Class offer? We've got drone footage that captures the racing lines, visual markers for your braking points, acceleration zones, and the best overtake opportunities on your racetrack, pedal cam to show you where to brake and when to accelerate, and 360 degree footage to make sure you don't miss any parts on the racetrack. We've covered 13 racetracks in the United States. And Australia, you're up next. So visit carclass.com to get your track information. Are you ready to get behind the wheel? From Formula One to NASCAR and IndyCar, all the pros start here. information check us out online at mccarting.com or call us and go racing today
and welcome back as we are about to get going here with our heat races. First round of heat races coming to you live here on Kart Chaser. You're watching the first round of the Indy Karting Challenge. We're about to go underway with your 206 Cadet along with Sportsman. Following that is going to be 206 Medium. Then we're going to get into 206 Junior, 206 Masters, KA Senior with KA Masters. The length of the race is going to be five minutes plus two laps here for Heat Race 1. And then we get going for the final. That will be 10 minutes plus two laps set to come to you live here at WRP on Kart Chaser. This is the first round here of the new Indy Karting Challenge. If you are watching with us now, we appreciate your guys' support and uh, bearing with us here at the start of things. We had a little bit of confusion as far as getting drivers lined up on grid, but they are all set, ready to go now. And there they go, rolling off for the first race here back in the 2024 season. This is your K, or sorry, your 206 cadets and sportsmen. We have one, two spun around there exiting pit lane, three, four, five now spun around as well. So we are already planning on sending them one time by so they can get some heat in the tires. It is approximately 35 degrees here at Wildland Raceway Park. So a little bit chilly out, uh, just above freezing here this morning. So we're sending them one time around to get the tires up to temperature. And now that'll probably also be used to get these kiddos lined up back in the correct running order. So they're going to take one whole lap here uh, before getting lined up and set to go underway. Your starting order is Kaysen Hendrickson starting on pole position next to uh, Will Fretchington uh, 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 in uh, P2. Again, if I'm saying the names wrong, please come up here and correct me this afternoon. Titus Roberts set for P3. Dominic Gaddis in P4. Nico Santos in P5. Cadence Peebles in the sixth spot. Dalton Sears, P7. Blake Martinez in P8. number eight. Danny O'Gara in ninth. P10 is going to be Jordan Lamphin. P11, William Victor. P12, Zachary uh, Bleak. P13, Oscar, sorry, that is not right. So, uh, yes, multiple drivers set to go green here this afternoon as we are now looking at your uh, top 12 so far. There they are on your screen, lined up there on the south side hairpin, also known as turn eight. We're gonna get them lined back up. And again, we had some turned around here earlier this morning, or uh, earlier coming out of pit exit. So now we are going to uh, get them lined up back and away. And the rest of the running order as well. Austin Taylor, P13. Hudson Howard, P14. Reagan Hodge, uh, Hodgins in P15. Chase Call in P16. Brett Hastings, P17. Patrick McNeely in P18. Jason Martin in P19. Elam Stoner in P20. And Eli Alexander rounding out the 21 carts. Set to take the green hair shortly. We got one stalled coming up the hill over into the inside hairpin. Now, there's the rest of the field. Your top two of... Uh, Hendrickson and Fletch, uh, Fletchington in P2. That is your top two out in front. Titus Roberts, Dominic Gaddis are the two following from behind. Two different classes here. Your 206 Cadet and your 206 Sportsman are now lined up here. A little bit of gap in between the two of them as we're coming down to a walking pace again. They're going to take the green flag heading down into turn one. It is no longer the turn one heading into the oval. We have tram lines set up on the entry of turn one, so let's watch them now. As they come out of that final corner, lined up side by side, heading down into turn one. Eyes on the starter here. Green flag is out for both groups coming into turn number one. It looks like an inside start there from Casey Henderson. We'll go straight to the front as they're now going to go side by side over at a turn two, heading into the sweeper and the quick little double right hander of turns three and four, heading back over into that long left hander of turns five. They're still going door to door here. It looks like an outside run there from Will there in P2 is where he started. Now he finds himself up into P1. Jason Hendrickson there in the second position is going to tuck into the toe just behind Dominic Gaddis in P3. O'Gara there in fourth heading through the Daytona corner heading up now into the south side hairpin. Out in front now for the first time this weekend. Uh, Will Fletchington is going to lead out of the inner hairpin. Let's see if he can lead lap number one of the 2024 season. Through the inside hairpin they go. A little bit of a gap now starting to form there between Casey and Henderson. That second spot up to Will in P1. Coming across the uh, start finish straight now. Heading down into turn number one. So it is going to be Will Fletchington leading the way here for the first race of the 2024 season. And they're still going to go door to door for third and fourth. That is Danny O'Gara in that top cart USA uh, chassis there. Now on the outside heading over into that double uh, right hander before we get to that final sweeping left. And Titus Roberts on the inside. 
because now they're going to settle back down. Titus Roberts is going to hold on to that third position. O'Gara back there in P4th, but O'Gara on that bumper of P3 of Titus Roberts, two Daytona corner. And just behind Danny O'Gara, Dominic Gaddis not too far back. So there's your top two. Let's see if we can't take a look there for that battle for third. Your top two still Wolf uh, Fletchington out in front. Casey Henderson, P2. They look to be staying uh, one and two, so let's take a peek there for that battle for third. They're closing back up. Again, that is Titus Roberts being uh, pushed a little bit there from Danny O'Gara coming down towards the start finish straight now. Good shot of your leaders uh, out of that start finish straight, heading down to that second straightaway, I guess you could call it, into turn number one. Uh, position change there for P3. Danny O'Gara now up into the third spot. Dominic Gaddis count him back now into P number four. Sorry, Titus Roberts back into P number four. Dominic Gaddis, the fastest card on track previously set in P5. So the top five slowly starting to close back up. There is Case and Henderson, that second spot, closing up to the leader of Will uh, Fletchington in the lead. He has a peek to the inside on that south side hairpin. Thinks better of it. So Fletchington still leading. Hendrickson P2, O'Gara P3, nose to tail, then a little bit of separation before we get to Titus Roberts in P4, and then Dominic Gaddis in P number five. So about two minutes and 25 seconds plus two laps still remaining here for the first heat race. There's a position change down to the inside. There goes Casey Hendrickson up into the point now. So Casey Hendrickson leading for the first time this weekend. And it looks like that is also going to open the floodgates for Will Fletchington is under attack now from Danny O'Gary. He's trying the over-under. Now he has a peek to the inside heading over to turn number five. Can't get it done. He goes straight to the back bumper. And already a lead has started to form there for Casey Hendrickson. About four or five cart lengths. Maybe even more now as it looks like Fletchington is going to be holding up O'Gara. O'Gara trying to get around. Sends it up on the inside. Gets the position change done. However However, Hendrickson now has about a half a straight away to lead over O'Gara. O'Gara under fire now from uh, Fletchington again. So now Will is going to go back into P2. O'Gara getting a little frustrated there. It looks like he's anxious to try to get around just behind O'Gara. Titus Roberts and Dominic Gaddis are still nose to tail. So they are now going to go four deep, nose to tail, second, third, fourth, and fifth, trying to chase down the leader of Case and Hendrickson last time by. Henderson had a 1.2 second advantage over the rest of the field there of Fletchington running in P2. O'Gara close on the back bumper of Will. Does he have a run now out of turn five? Looks like there is a lapper out in front. They're going to get by, yes. And now O'Gara close on the back bumper again. He's trying to set him up going into the Daytona corner for a pass now into the south side hairpin. Looks high. Does he send it late? No, stays in line. So Aguera, I think, is now going to try to work with Will to give a little bit of a push there to close back up to the leader of Casey Henderson. Remember last time by, Henderson had a 1.298 second advantage over your second third placement of Fletchington and O'Gara. This time across the stripe, what does the gap do? Does it grow? Does it maintain? Well, it's actually starting to shrink, 0 .960. So just under two tenths. They made up three tenths that last lap on your leader. And now the gap is visually starting to close as they're starting to uh, – reach the toe range, so to speak, of Casey Henderson, your leader, out in front through turns three and four they go. There's a gap on your screen of the distance between first, second, and third. First is on the left-hand side of your screen. Second and third is the uh, orange helmet there of Will uh, Fletchington in P2. And then P3 is Danny O'Gara in that Top Car USA chassis running in that third spot, running at her podium. Just a little bit farther behind, Titus Roberts and Dominic Gaddis are staying nose and tail. They haven't quite swapped positions a whole, whole lot. They have now maintained the same as, uh, I'm sorry, I'm mistaken. Gaddis is now up into P4, and that is Titus Roberts in P5. But they are uh, out of the field of view for the battle for the podium spots as we continue to watch here the battle for second. O'Gara pushing on Fletchington, trying to close him back up to the leader there of Casey Hendrickson as they are about eight tenths behind, so made up one tenth that last lap. Although now, oh, a little bit of trouble there for your leader. Casey Hendrickson gets caught up behind a lap cart, and just like that, the gap now goes down to zero. Here comes Will Fletchington on the inside, having a peek, heading over into that little chicane. Can't get it done. Here comes O'Gara in third. So the top three knows the tail, trying to uh, close in on Hendrickson for the lead as we are now approaching. I believe we are at two laps to go. Look for the white flag this time by. If my math has a mistake, which nine times out of ten, it normally does. Here comes Will on the inside. New leader possibly? Yes. Will Fletchington now back up onto point. Hendrickson now into P2. O'Gara still holding on to the third spot. White flag is out this time by. This is the battle for the pole position. Here comes a look to the inside from Casey Hendrickson. Getting help from Danny O'Gara. Do they have the move? There goes Hendrickson. O'Gara still trying. Now he's back on the outside line. There is a lapper now. 
close, or uh, that the leader, I should say, of Henderson is closing up into now. So Aguera is losing a little bit of time along with Will Fletchinson. Here comes the lapper. That's going to bobble the speed. Both second and third go by the lapper. Gap now closes down to all but zero. Through Daytona corner they go. Will a little bit far back. Is he going to send it late here? Hendrickson thinks it might happen, goes on the defensive, that's going to close it up even more now. So Will has maybe one or two opportunities for a pass as he's taking the inside hairpin. He sends it on the inside. Does he have the point? No! Hendrickson closes him off. Hendrickson is going to hold on to the point. Here comes O'Gara trying for second. He can't get it done. Kaysen Hendrickson takes the checkered flag as they go side by side across the line. Just outruns Will Fletchingson there. About 0.058 of a second separates the two. So that'll be your front row. Henderson starting a pull. Fletchington in P2. Danny O'Gara will start inside of row number two. Uh, Dominic Gattis will round out your front row on the outside. Titus Roberts rounds out your top five. Austin Taylor finishing in P6. Nico Santos in P7. William uh, Venter in P number eight. Blake Martinez in P9. Zachary Pleak in P10. So that'll do it. For your 206 Cadet and 206 Sportsman, up next, we're going to go to an adult class. The 206 Mediums set to go green here. After that, we're going to go back to Juniors with 206 Junior, then 206 Masters and KA Senior and KA Masters. So, still plenty of heat racing coming to you live here on Car Chasers. You're watching round number one of the IndyCar Challenge. We're at a commercial break. I need a new 219 chain, I need a 77 tooth rich sprocket, I need, I need some more chain lube, and I need it probably as soon as like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Dude, are you even listening? Like, we need this to run this weekend. Want anything else? What do you mean? I already got it in the car on Acceleration Cart Racing's online store, bro. All orders over $200 get free shipping. Oh, um, throwing a set of tires. Done. Everything you need, all in one place, and shipped to your door for free on orders of $200 or more. Exclusions apply. Shop AKR.com. Commercial break. And welcome back here. We are set to go green shortly for your 206 mediums. Real quick, attention the paddock, attention the paddock. 
If you have a white Kia in parking spot number one, you are being asked to move your car so a competitor can access their trailer. Again, if you have a white Kia par uh, parked in spot one, you are being asked to move your car so a competitor can access their trailer. Again, one final time, if you're in a white Kia parked in spot number one, please move your car so a competitor can access their trailer. We are about to get set to go here live for your 206 medium event. There is your top two uh, on the inside. Brenda Hanville sets pole position, that 507 Privateer Cosmic OTK. And just on the outside there in that gold uh, 01, that is Eli Fox on the new gen entry and chassis set to take the start on the outside of row number one as we have one spinning uh, there coming out of the pits. Nice little save there from cart number 81. They are able to continue on underway. So we're gonna send them one more time by to get those tires up to temperature. This is a little bit uh, smaller of a class than we saw in your 206 Cadet and Sportsman. However, this usually has the tightest front field all the way through with this 206 medium event. We have one more spunning off there uh, on the back side coming up into that final corner. Again, that's cart number 81. These tires cold about 36 degrees. It's starting to warm up here a little bit uh, slowly but surely. The track is starting to come up to temperature and being a little bit more bearable for all of us here this afternoon. This is a race in early spring. Uh, we are about two days into spring so far. So we're just lucky and happy to be here for this first round event for the IndyCar Day Challenge at Whiteland Raceway Park. So your top two, Brenna Hanville, Eli Fox start one and two. Kyle Landon will start the inside of row number two with uh, Ryan Ginschmer in P number four on the outside of row number two. Evan McCorkadale will start in P5 next to Braden Johnson in P6. Levi Wilbur in P7 with Braden Heber in P8. Higgin Day starts in P9 with Gage Jessinato in P10. Eric Spilling in 11th. Uh, Raldoff uh, Galassia in P12 and Brennan Lorick in P13. So that is going to be your starting order. And I believe there may be problems. We have one stopped inside pit lane. Can't guy, uh, get a cart number on it, but I think that might be Brayden Johnson, and I think it is. Brayden Johnson won't take the start here this afternoon. He's going to have to go back and start in the back of heat race, or start the feature race as we get set to go for the heat race here. There's your top two inside, outside. Hanville and Eli Fox. Let's see him line up here on the order. Coming down to see the green flag. Do we do it, uh, see it this time? Yes, we do. We are green into turn number one, and Hanville gets a good jump, and Eli Fox is getting shuffled back quite a few positions there. He is looking back in the sixth or seventh spot. Hanville able to hold on to the point, so he is now going to open up a little bit of a gap there over your second placement. I believe that is the uh, 919 of Ryan uh, Ginschmer, who started the inside of run number two, and they are going to try to run away from the field. So top two starting to pull away. About a five or six count that eight-cart linked lead now for your top two of the rest of the field. So already a nice, clean break for your first and third placement. Of Hanville and uh, Ryan Ginschmer in P now number two after starting in the third spot. Eli Fox able to climb back up into P4 but he is now going to lead that second pack and try to close back up to the rest of the field. Lap number one about to be in the books again. This is five minutes plus two laps in distance here into turn number one. There's your top two. Hanville and Ginschmer. Eli Fox running in P3. Kyle Landon in P4 from that top cart USA chassis as now it looks like Landon trying to take it around the outside of Eli Fox. Eli Fox is now going to have to settle in to that third position. He's trying to get as much of a gap as he can over the rest of the field. Just behind Kyle Landon is the privateer on the Braille Art entry of uh, Evan McCorkadale now running in P5. Just behind him, I believe that is Wilbur in P6. And then Brayden Johnson, so I'm wrong. And I was mistaken, Kyle, it was cart number 48 that did not take the green that last time by. Uh, or sorry, take the start in general. So unfortunate to see. Hopefully we can see him back here in the future later on this afternoon, but I am mistaken. It was not Braden Johnson who did not take the uh, start. I believe that may have been someone else. So we are now going to continue to watch and see these top four going at it here. Anvil, Ginchmer, Fox, Landon is your top four. Top two have a break over the rest of the field now. Anvil getting uh, not so much of a push there from Ginchmer, just as much as those two are able to pull themselves away from the pack. And if you're able to break that draft, off from the rest of the field, you can get a decent sized gap and hope that that second pack just continues to battle amongst themselves, which I think we've seen so far. Eli Fox looks to be a little frustrated as he now has competition now going side by side through the chicane. I believe that is Kyle Landon who had a peak for it, not able to get it done as McCorkadale following not too far behind. So now there is your top two, Hanville, Ginchmer, one and two. 
And now Fox continues to battle back and forth here with Kyle Landon, who is now up into P3. Fox goes back into P4. McCorkin will not, uh, not too far behind. He is up in that pack in P5. Brain Johnson in six, Levi Wilbur in seven. So that is that uh, top three packs, I guess you can say. You got your front two pack of Hanville and Jinchmer. Then you get back to that second pack there of uh, Kyle Landon, Eli Fox, McCorkadale. Then you get back to your third pack, so to speak. This is too straggling from that uh, second pack there of McCorkadale and Brayden Johnson. Then you get back into three and four, which is uh, their own pack of themselves. They're far off the pace of that second pack being led by Wilbur, Spilling, and Day is that three in that second pack. And now it looks like that second pack is starting to close back up again. The gap between the top, uh, sorry, between second and third now continues to grow. 2.5 seconds is the distance between uh, Landon and Jinchmer. And then if you look at the gap between the leader of Hanville is about 2.9. I'm going to count that about three seconds now. Well, it actually went down a little bit, 2.8 is the gap now between Hanville and Kyle Landon in third. 2.6 seconds between uh, Jinchmer and Kyle Landon for second and third as we have one stopped over on track with the wheel running uh, off and I believe that is Brayton Johnson coming to a stop on the exit of turn number one. So Brayton Johnson, unfortunate to see his heat race come to an end now. He is going to have to go to the back of the feature and try to work his way back up. There he is walking away from his cart, trying to get it away from the track so far as he's getting a little bit of help there from our track marshal so we get the track cleared. So top two is who we continue to watch right now. Hanville out in front. He led from pole position. Now he's trying to see if he can't do a sweep right now at the top or uh, from the qualifying and the heat race as we are sitting at about a minute and 10 seconds to go, plus two laps. So still Hanville, Jinchmer, one and two, Kyle Lane and P3, Fox, McCorkadale uh, in fourth and fifth respectively. So not a whole lot of shuffling for position that we've seen so far here uh, in the 206 medium race. It's been a little stagnant there with the top two leading with a decent size uh, gap of the rest of the field. Although now it looks like Hanville's starting to pull away there for your second placement of Ryan Jinchmer. This would be great for Hanville if he is able to bring Jinchmer out of the draft. That way he doesn't have to worry about uh, him closing back up to him. And not only that, but it'll cause a little bit of a buffer between himself and that second pack if they are able to close up here in the next 13 seconds plus two laps. So I think we're going to get two to go this time by, although my timing could be off, and I think it just might be. It's going to be close. Looking about five seconds now. No, we're going to get two laps to go now. So two laps to go at the line here for your top two of Hanville and Jinchmer. Jinchmer now trailing by about half a second off of Hanville. Kyle Landon sets P3, and something may have happened in that second pack. Look at the times, because now it is uh, Landon up into P3, McCorkadale up into fourth, and there's a decent-sized gap between the three of them, of Landon, McCorkadale, and then Fox. Fox has Eli Wilbur on his back bumper, so he's making the pressure on Eli Fox so far. So, as it sits now, Landon would be P3, McCorkadale P4. Again, how they finish in this heat will determine the starting spots for the feature later on this morning. As we are now just going to sit and watch this next lap and a quarter. As all the while as I was rambling on about what's happening in the mid-pack, uh, Ryan Jinchmer was able to close up on the Brita Hanville now. So this is the battle for a pole position for the feature as they go down into turn one. And there goes the defensive move there from Hanville. He looks to the inside. Jinchmer says, all right, I'm going to send it up high, try to get a good run here. He closes up the momentum. He's going to try to run that outside. Now look for a crossover heading over into turns three and four. Not able to close back up. He is on the back bumper. He's in the toe. It looks like he got an okay run, not a great run out of turn four. Up into turn five, goes straight to the back bumper. Now looks to the inside line through the crossover. Not going to be close enough to try to make his move. Follows on the back bumper. Does he try it here? Hanville already anticipates it. Goes to the block on the inside line. Right around the outside goes Ryan Jinchmer. They're going to go door to door up the hill. Jinchmer now has a spot. Look for a crossover again from Hanville. Jinchmer defends. Hanville tries for a crossover move. Not going to be enough to get it done. He might be able to pull it out at the line for a side-by-side -side finish. No. Ryan Jinchmer will start on pole position for the future this afternoon. Hanville comes across in P2. Kyle Landon, I believe, will come across in P3, if I'm not mistaken. P4 goes to McCorkadale, P5, Eli Fox. So that'll round out your top five here for your 206 medium. Up next for your heat races is 206 Junior coming to you shortly once we get these carts parked and make sure that the field is set for the heat race number one here for 206 Junior. So don't go anywhere and stay tuned as you're watching here on Kart Chaser. This is round number one of the Indy Karting Challenge.
Brandon, why are there all these charges for just over $200 from Acceleration Car Racing's website? That's because AKR gives you free shipping on orders of $200 or more within the continental US. Okay, but I thought you were just getting a pair of gloves. That's what, 70 bucks? But if I'm getting a new pair of gloves, I might as well get a new pair of shoes to match. And then on top of that, I'll get a neck brace because with the shipping, it's basically free. Yeah, I do not think the math checks out on that. Everything you need, all in one place and shipped to your door for free for orders of $200 or more. Exclusions apply. Spend responsibly. Shop AKR.com. I'm David Serra, 18 time Australian karting champion, and we're launching Kart Class. Kart Class is an advanced digital training program that suits a driver who's just starting out in the sport, all the way to the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program, you're gonna be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to brake in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know when to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below.
And welcome back here as we're about to get underway. So we are about to go green here for 206 Junior. This is heat race number one of one. So how they finish here will determine where they start for the feature this afternoon. Christopher Utzi is set to start on pole position next to Evan Patton. Loishan Laser starts in P3 next to Spencer Comby in P4. And Colin Harden will start in the fifth spot. So that is your top five rundown here for your 206 Juniors. Again, this is going to be five minutes plus two laps. That is going to be the distance here and how they finish. We'll determine where they start for the feature. The feature is 10 minutes plus two laps. So we are about halfway through the program after this one with 206 Junior. After that, we'll go to 206 Masters, followed by KA Senior and KA Masters. They're going to make the run down this uh, little bit of a dog leg of a straightaway, and then they're going to go through that final-ish type corner before getting the green flag down into turn number one in the tram line. So they're going to line up now into the tram lines, the top two of Utsi and Hart. UT is setting the pace coming down into turn one. There they are, that good line up there, good speed coming down towards start finish straight. Green flag is out, and it looks like inside run there from Christopher Utsi is actually going to go to the wayside. Holden Harder is going to go up to the front in cart number 57. That Burrell Art goes up to the point. Utsi now into P2, trying to see if he can't work a crossover. Up on the curbing there, went Holden Harder. So he now slots back into the second spot. Utsi goes to the point, and he is pulling away from the rest of the field. He's got about four to five Cartley's advantage over Holden Harder at a good start there to turn one. And now Harder doesn't have much of assistance from behind and not quite much of a toe there off of Christopher Utz. He's able to close up maybe about a half a car length to a cart length. He might get a little bit of a toe to help him on the straightaways. But now the slower parts of the track, he is closing it back up, especially in that inner hairpin. Two carts now separates the top two of Utz and Harder coming down into turn number one. There they go down past the start, finish straight down into turn number one. They go. No pass attempt made so far from Harder. He is going to stay slotted into that second position. Christopher Utsi out in front, holding on to that pole position. We go a little bit farther back. Evan Patton is in P number three. Spencer Comby in P4. And I believe that is Alicia Laser in P number five. Or sorry, holding Harder P5. Alicia Laser, I believe, is in the sixth spot. Uh, he disappeared from timing scoring, but I believe he is out there on that new gen entry and chassis. And we're going to continue to watch the top two now of Utsi and Harder. There's a good shot of the static camera going into the Daytona corner. Uh, you can see it clearly there through that quick little crossover heading into it now is here is Holden Harder trying to put the pressure on Utsi going into the inner hairpin up the hill in the final two corners before the little bit of a dog leg of a straightaway to receive uh, another lap into the books as we are now three minutes and 15 seconds to go. About a minute and 14 in so far. Into turn one, Holden Harder giving a huge push there to Utsi going into the corner. I think he's trying to get as much separation as he can, or maybe he's trying to force a mistake out of Utsi. It's a little bit early to, doing, uh, to be doing that. Tire temperatures are not fully up to pressure or heat yet. Uh, due to the fact that it is approximately 37 degrees out, it's a little bit chilly. I was talking to uh, our exclusive on-track reporter, Braden Sappenfield, and he actually chose not to race this week, and he said it's a little too cold for me, and he doesn't really like what it does to the tires, so he is uh, going to opt to not run this weekend. But now we're watching UC and Harder, one and two. Harder now about two cart lengths behind Christopher UC out in front as he continues to just almost fall in the wake there of UC. All he has to do now in the second spot is kind of just take a knee and wait the clock out. He's got plenty of time to try to make his move. He just needs to let UC not run away from him. He can stay in the draft, maybe save his tires and equipment, or he can possibly go for it to turn one like he's doing now. There it is, holding harder, up one more position. Prove me wrong. He is now going to lead the way over UC in the second spot. So I am mistaken and do apologize. It is Christopher Yeltsy, not Yeltsy, who is uh, in P number two right now, holding harder, able to get around him over into the pass into turn one. So it is harder in Yeltsy running in 
first and second respectively. Then you go a little bit farther back. The battle for third is between Evan Patton and Spencer Combe running in third and fourth. P5 is uh, Colin Harder. And then right behind him is Lewisian Laser in P number six. There's your top two. Again, like I was saying, Holden Harder could have bided his time there in that second spot, just like Yaltsi lead the way all the way through. However, he decided to go for the front. Now the roles have changed. We're about a minute and 20 seconds uh, to go plus two laps. That is a crucial part. You can just sit back there and wait for you in that second spot. They got plenty of room from behind. All you have to wait for is a double sticks in the air before you start to force an issue and uh, put the pressure on the leader. So now let's see if Yauti decides to do that or if he has a good opportunity if he's going to go try to go for the point out of Daytona corner. It looks like he had a good possible chance for a dive bomb there into the south side hairpin. He decided better of it. He's going to stay in the wing there of that Burrell Art being driven by Holden Harder. Christopher Yautzi on the Amex entry and an EOS running in P number two. Or sorry, that's an Evo, not an EOS. An Evo running in that second spot, car number 33, AMAX entry of Christopher Yautzi into turn one. Is there a pass here from Yautzi? He looks like he may have an opportunity if he wanted to force an issue. Decided better of it, continues to stay in the toe. We're looking at about 35 seconds to go as of now, plus two laps. So double sticks should be in the air this time by. Is there running about 50, second, uh, 50 seconds? is how long a lap is taking, almost 51 here on a bad lap. So these two continue to stay nose to tail. Yautzi giving a little bit of a push there to Holden Harder over in that quick little chicane before you get to Daytona corner, over into the south side hairpin. Does Yautzi try it now? Thought about it, had a quick look to the inside, and they got back into line. So he's going to continue to push on your leader of Holden Harder in that Burrell Art cart number 5757 coming up in the final two corners now. Look for it this time by Double Sticks in the Air presented by Adam Burrows, our flag man. And let's see it if Yautzi is going to go for it into turn number one now. Is he trying to turn one? No, he's going to stay in line. He's not going to try it this time. He might wait to the last lap or he might have a better part on track or feels more comfortable making a move. Through turn one, now the sweeper of turns two and three. Looks like we have one stopped on the inside of the right-hand side of the screen. Couldn't quite get a card for you guys, but I do see a wheel sitting in the middle of the track, so I think his day in this heat race is all but over. Now down the back stretch they go, over into the chicane. There it is, cart number 26, Spencer Combe, who is running in the fourth spot, come to a stop, and his day has come to a close. Here's a look to the out inside now for uh, Yautzi. He is up now onto the point. Harder goes back into P2, so Harder's still got about a lap and a quarter to make a move back on the point for the lead. Yautzi leads him up the hill. Now over into the final corner. Check, or sorry, white flag in the air one more time by Yautzi. Let's see if he goes on the defensive into turn one. He does. Here comes Harder. Harder's going to have the uh, cards in his hand. He tries to go around the outside and get a good run. Not a chance for a crossover yet. Over into turns two. Not a chance here at three. He's going to have one more good opportunity coming out of Daytona corner into turn five. He can get a good run out of turn five this time by. Does he get it? He does. There's a good run. Not going to be close enough to get the move done before the chicane. So he's going to have to try it out of Daytona. Through the chicane they go for the final time. Up through Daytona corner into the south side hairpin. And it looks like Yauci might be okay here. About two cart lengths is all he had over Holden Harder. Harder's going to have to close up quickly to make a move in the inner hairpin now. He's got a good run. He goes straight to the back bumper. Sends it in late side by side. Harder's now on point. Yautzi, is he going to try for a crossover? He is over the curbing. He goes, and that's going to be just enough for Holden Harder to hold on and take the win here for heat race number one. Yautzi comes across in P2. Patton in P3. Uh, Colin Harden in P4. I believe that is going to be Lucian Laser in P5. Uh, and Spencer Combe, who came to a stop at the wheel, sitting in the middle of the track in the sixth position. So that'll do it for your 206 juniors. We got two more to go before we get to features. 206 Masters set to go next. Following that, it's going to be KA Senior along with KA Master. I need a new 219 chain, I need a 77 toothbrush sprocket, I need, I need some more chain lube, and I need it probably as soon as like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Dude, are you even listening? Like, we need this to run this weekend. Want anything else? What do you mean? I already got it in the car on Acceleration Kart Racing's online store, bro. All orders over $200 get free shipping. Oh, um, throwing a set of tires. Done. 
everything you need all in one place and shipped to your door for free on orders of $200 or more. Exclusions apply. Shop AKR.com. Are you looking for an advantage in your competition? Well, Car Class has done the hard work for you. We've traveled to your racetracks to give you the inside knowledge. So what does Car Class offer? We've got drone footage that captures the racing lines, visual markers for your braking points, acceleration zones, and the best overtake opportunities on your racetrack. Pedal cam to show you where to brake and when to accelerate, and 360 degree footage to make sure you don't miss any parts on the racetrack. We've covered 13 racetracks in the United States. And Australia, you're up next. So visit carclass.com to get your track information. Are you ready to get behind the wheel? From Formula One to NASCAR and IndyCar, all the pros start here. Check us out online at mccarting.com or call us at Go Racing today. And here we go for your 206 Masters Heat Race about to get underway. Matt Geist and Adam Dietz are going to take them to the line here as they're coming out of what used to be turn number one on the old layout, now coming up onto the tram lines here. 
It is going to be Matt Guy setting the pace here over at uh, Matt D. Or sorry. Matt Geis is going to set the pace over Adam Dietz now coming into turn number one. And it is green, and it looks like Adam Dietz is going to have a good runner on the outside. Does he have the point coming over into turn two? He does. So new leader now is going to be Dietzy up into P1 as oh, a little sideways and up on the curbing there went your second placement of Matt Geis. Matt Geis was your pull sitter going into this one, and it looks like they're going to be shuffling for that third spot. It looked like for a moment Derek Hastings had him to turn five. Now it's going to go the way to Tom Harleman, who is up into that third position now out of Daytona corner they go and already a little bit of separation between your top two. It's the new young gun in the 206 Masters of Adam Dietz. He graduated out of the 206 senior class and is now finding his way in the 206 Masters about two cart lengths ahead of Matt Geis there in the second spot. Geis gets a little loose and somehow able to save it through uh, the inside hairpin. Now up the hill they go. He's going to be in the toe of his friend out there in front of Adam Dietz across the stripe. Lap number one in the books as we are about four minutes still yet to go so plenty of time for racing here. Again, this is going to be five minutes plus two laps, and they're about four minutes to go now, about one minute in the book so far. So Adam Dietz about two cart lengths ahead of Geist there in P2, and they get a little bit farther back to Tom Harleman. It looks like he might be slowly closing up onto the top two. Then you get back to Derek Hastings and Troy Tony running nose to tail in fourth and fifth. Just behind them is uh, Brian, or, uh, yeah, Brian Owens in the sixth spot. I believe he was on a Swift card, so correction for me earlier today when I said he was on a Swift. He is now on a new gen chassis and entry there. So Brian Williams in the sixth spot. Troy Tony also on a new gen chassis and entry. A little bit of a push there from that second pack on the back bumper of Tom Harleman is Derek Casey. He's trying to push him up to the top two all the while. Matt Geist has closed up to Adam Dietz and now has a peek into turn one. Does he get it done here? He's on the inside. Clear. Now Geist goes to point. Dietz is going to try for another crossover now coming over to turn two. Swings a little wide. Falls back into the toe. Does he have enough to make a run out of turn four to five? No, he actually gets a little loose there on exit. Almost dips a wheel off on the uh, exit of turn four on the entry of five, but he is going to stay within two cart lengths of your leader now of Matt Geist out in front. There's a good shot of that entry, enter, and exit of that chicane. Then you get to the Daytona corner there on our static camera. Beautiful shot there down that back straightaway as we're watching now the top two start to pull away that second pack. That four pack slowly starting to close up. That is Hastings Harleman uh, swap position. So now Hastings up to third, Harleman in fourth. Right behind Harleman is Troy Tony. Not too far behind him is Brian Williams in that sixth spot. To get a little bit farther back, you get to uh, Kenneth Owens running in seventh, Corey Patterson in eighth, and Eric Patton in the ninth spot. Top two continue to run nose to tail. A little bit of a uh, gap starting to form now between Matt Geist out front, Adam Dietz in second. Adam Dietz had the uh, early lead at the start. If I recall anything about Matt Geist, he loves going out on lower tire pressures than normal. And he uh, talking to him last year and the year before, he said that he likes the fact that when it comes about five laps to go, his tires, or his tires I should say, are still coming in. However, uh, Adam Dietz is a good friend of his. They usually share data. The three of them of Matt Geist, Adam Dietz, and Derek Hastings, all privateer entries, all have garages here at Whiteland. They can usually find themselves uh, sitting around after the track and just hanging out and having a good time. However, they do help each other out on track. They all three have a lot of experience, especially on the old layout and now on the new layout um, here at Whiteland Raceway Park as we continue to watch the top two. Geist and Dietz, one and two. Dietz now falling back about two and a half to three car lengths deficit between himself and the leader of Matt Geist. However, Derek Hastings is starting to pull away from that second pack and creating his own pack right now in P3. He's trying to see if he can't close up to Adam Dietz. He's got about a minute and 20 seconds plus two laps to go, so time is not in his favor. However, Adam Dietz starting to close it up back now. I think his tires might be coming up to temperature or he's found a better line that he likes on the exit of turn five because he was closing up there on the back stretch through the chicane and Daytona corner. He's still in the toe on the brink of falling out of it right now. Last time by, he was just under a half a second down on the leader. I wouldn't be surprised if this time by, he made up about a tenth or a half a tenth. Let's see it. Last time by, 0.488. This time by, 0.652. Prove me wrong. He is actually losing time now. About a tenth is how much he's losing to your leader of Matt Geist out in front. About 30 seconds left to go now, plus two laps. So it'll be double sticks in the air this next time by. Derek Hastings was uh, actually running about a tenth slower than Adam Dietz previous lap. His fastest time is still a 
about one-tenth off of Adam Dietz. Adam Dietz's fastest lap was actually last time by. Fastest driver in the field so far, Troy Tony in fourth, ran a 50.064, which that last time I was actually about seven-tenths faster than your leader of Mac Ice out in front. So we'll keep an eye on that gap as well as we're approaching now to see double sticks in the air. Two laps to go this time by. And uh, it looks like Adam Dietz is kind of just maintaining that gap that he's had to a guy so far of about half a second, if not more, this time by stays about the same, 0.693. So he loses just a little bit of time there, not a whole, whole lot. However, with two laps to go, or a little less than two laps to go, I should say, not what he wants to see right now is he's trying to close in on to Matt Geist. Just behind them, there's a battle for third starting to heat up between Derek Hastings and Troy Tony. Last time by, Troy Tony set the fastest lap previously. Now he is running a about six one thousandths better than Derek Hastings. So he's on his back bumper, giving him some push as they're both going to get uh, caught up in lap traffic. There it is on your right hand side of your screen. So their chances of closing back up are all to the wayside. And I think this is going to be smooth sailing here for Matt Geis once he receives a white flag this time by. If he can just keep it clean here for the next lap, he will have a very good start to the feature itself. And I'm mistaken. We see two laps to go now. I was wrong on my timing. So two laps to go now. White flag next time by. Gap between first and second is continuing to open up. About 1.29 seconds between your leader of Mac Ice out in front and Adam Dietz running in second. Although it looks like Dietz may have started to close it back up there in the exit of turn one when he saw the two laps to go. If he's able to pick it up just a little bit more, he could be able to catch back up to that toe and have a run on it on the last lap. However, due to the uh, little bit of an incident, I guess you could say, with the lap traffic and uh, Troy Tony and Derek Hastings, Troy Tony was able to get around Derek Hastings. However, the gap is now open to about three and a half, just over three and a half seconds between Troy Tony and Matt Geis. As we're going to be looking at your leaders now for this final lap, white flag will be out for your 206 Masters. Still, Geist out in front of Dietz. Dietz is slowly closing up visually uh, on screen, but I don't think it's going to be enough to get him by the time the checkered flag comes out. One more lap to go, and the gap starts to close now. 0 0.141 is the distance. Uh, it shows on timing and scoring, but I think that's a little bit higher than what we've seen before there from Adam Dietz in P2. So he is closing back up to the leader. Don't think it's going to be enough unless Matt Geist makes some sort of major mistake here in the next uh, half a lap. Out of turn five they go down the back straightaway for the final time here in heat race. Uh, the only heat race I should say. Over into the chicane now into Daytona corner and Matt Adam Dietz has got a run on Matt Geist. Can't get it done in the south side hairpin as he continues to follow from behind. Might have one opportunity in the inner hairpin if he's uh, feeling risky enough to take it. It looks like no. Might be a photo finish. He continues to close up the hill. Just not going to be enough. So Matt Geis will sit on pole position for the feature this afternoon. Adam Dietz will join him on the uh, outside of run number one. Troy Tony comes across in fourth. Derek Hastings in fifth. And I believe Tom Harleman is going to round things out inside the top five with Brian Williams in sixth. So that'll do it. For your 206 Masters, up next is your KA Senior along with KA Masters. And after that, we'll go to our final. Concluding the final for this morning group, we'll then go to the Kid Cart Program. After that, we'll go to the second half of the races this afternoon. Again, we have morning and afternoon session from qualif or practice qualifying heats and final being ran all the way through both morning and afternoon in two different groups. Kid Cart Program will separate the two. But up next, KA Senior, KA Masters, set for their uh, heat race Coming up next, live here on Cart Chaser.
And here we go for your heat races. Augusto Sato Sharapa in that top cart USA entry starts on the inside on pole, posi uh, pole position. Jackson Deal on the MPG. Cart Republic starts on the outside of row number one. They're going to lead the way to the green. I believe that is Braden Rudder sitting back there in the fourth spot on the inside in P3. Uh, I believe that is another MPG Cart Republic entry as they're greened out into turn number one. Good start there from Sato Sharapa. He goes up far onto the point, and it looks like Jackson Deal is going to have his elbows out there for the second spot. And now in P3, that is uh, Brendan Hebert in that third spot. So he's going to split up the two MPGs and just a little bit farther behind, I believe. Sorry, that is Lane Gibbs there in that second MPG running in fourth. And just behind them is Hudson Porter on that top cart USA entry now, slotted into P number five. Huge lead from the start now from Augusto Sato. Sharapa opening up what appears to be about a five or six car length advantage as he has gone uh, straight out of the gate. Opens like he's got another gear on that car as he opened up a huge lead down into turn number one now. About 1.4 seconds from lap number one. Jackson Deal, P2. Brennan Heber, P3. That is AJ Ludd, my mistake, in P4 on that top cart USA entry. Lane Gibbs, MPG, uh, Cart Republic in P5. Hudson Porter, P6. Austin Fairfield, another MPG entry in P7. Uh, and that is going to be, I believe that is the closest pack there out in front. Then you got Michael in P8. Bain Bennett the second in P9. Casey Perry in 10th. That is going to round out your top 10. Let's keep an eye out on your leader in front, Augusto Sato Sharapa in P1. 1.4 seconds that last line by. Uh, was able to get away from all that chaos there in that second on back row and is using it to his advantage to open up a decent sized lead. Meanwhile, they're battling for the third spot. AJ Ludd in that top cart USA able to get around Braden Heber uh, on the privateer entry in P4. Lane Gibbs, uh, MPG entry in P5. Austin Fairfield, another MPG in the sixth position now into turn number one. Gap between one and two, Agosto Sato Sharapa able to open up the lead to a 1.5 second advantage. Uh, was 1.4, so he was able to make up a tenth last time by. He did go purple as well, 44.795. Jackson Deal in P2 went a 44.919. So still at a deficit is your second placement to the leader. And this might be a little stagnant out here in the top two as you continue to watch the 906 Top Cart USA entry of Agosto Sato Sharapa out in front. Across the stripe, we're going to put another lap in the books. About three minutes is going to remain when he makes his way across the start-finish straight. And let's look at the gaps. He opens it up again. Augusto did. He went to 44.456 over Jackson Deals, 44.570. So 1.7 seconds is now the gap between one and two. Then he get back in this battle for the third position between A.J. Ludd, Braden Heber, and Lane Gibbs. A.J. Ludd, who was running on a Top Cart USA entry, Braden Heber, Privateer, and then you get to uh, P5 of Lane Gibbs, another MPG Cart Republic entry, rounding out your top five. And it looks like uh, Heber might be starting to close up to A.J. Ludd. Lane Gibbs is in the toe there of the top two of that pack, I should say, of third and fourth. Uh, meanwhile, Jackson Deal, his teammate, out in the second spot, continues to try to run and make up as much as he can on the deficit that he has out in front. He did go faster than Augusto Sato Sharapa. Last time by Sharapa went a 45-point triple three. Jackson Deal went a 44.546, so he was able to close up about two tenths. Now it's under a second, the gap between the top two. However, that's a big ask here on a bullring type track like Whiteland Raceway Park with a minute 42 plus two laps to go. So he's going to have to pull something out of the top hat if he wants to make up significant time to battle for the lead here. And again, how they finish in this heat race determines where they start in the feature. So this isn't make or break, but this can put you in a better position like we saw Augusto Sato Sharapa do on the start when he was able to make up about one and a half second just from staying out of all the chaos and the battling back and forth there from second on back. Oh, I say that, but Augusto Sato Sharapa last time by, he was able to pull something on the top half. 43.616 for Augusto Sato Sharapa. I think that is the fastest lap we've seen all weekend. Opens up about one second over Jackson Deal, who went a 44.529 in the second spot. So we're sitting under a minute to go, plus two laps. Jackson Deal, you're going to have to either hope for a mistake if you're uh, sitting in his position, or just take a knee and wait the clock out. You know you're starting up on the front row. You can take it back to the drawing boards, figure out where you can make an improvements overall and work your way forward. And right now, he's sitting uh, himself at about a second advantage over A.J. Ludd in that second spot. So he's preventing a lockout of the front row from the Top Cart USA's here in your K.A. Senior and Master. Uh, Jackson Deal, his teammate of Lane Gibbs, finds himself back in P. 
25. He's battling back and forth with uh, AJ, or sorry, Brayton Heber and AJ Ludd as well. So that is a battle for the fourth and fifth position right now. He's trying to get around Brayden Heber, the privateer entry, sitting in that fourth spot. He would love nothing more to be just a little bit closer to his teammate, maybe give some support when it comes time for the future this afternoon. This time by. The uh, clock continues to wind down as I believe it is going to expire before they get to the line, and it will. So it'll be just over five minutes when they make their way to the stripes. We'll see two this time by Augusta Sato Sharapa has kind of just maintained the gap. He fell back to about a 44.297. Jackson Deal matching his time of 42.295 the last time by. And this time by 44.323 for Sato Sharapa. Deal went a 44.370. So almost identical lap times. And this will be uh, good news for Jackson Deal. He can't close up to make a move for the lead. That just is probably not feasibly possible unless Sato Sharapa makes some sort of mistake. However, going back to the drawing boards, look at the lap times. If you're Jackson Deal, you can find out maybe one or two ways how you can improve on the start and then have a better feature this afternoon because you're going to start right next to the guy out in front of you. Looking a little bit farther back, uh, A.J. Ludd in the top crate USA entry in P3. He's got some separation between himself and Lane Gibbs and Braden Heber, who battling uh, back and forth for the moment. Gibbs was able to get around Heber, so Heber is now going to go back into P5. Lane Gibbs on the MPG iCart or uh, I. Heart Republic entry, I should say, is now up into P number four. So he should start right behind his teammate if things stay how they are uh, when it comes time for the future. White flag in the air. Gap is slowly now starting to close down. Augusta Sato Sharapa last lap with a 45.140, although I think he is doing uh, solar lap times to save his tires just a little bit. Uh, Jackson Deal with a 44.438. So unless something major happens here in the next four or five corners for Augusto Sato Sharapa, he is set to start on the pole position. He's got to navigate three more corners up into the inner hairpin for the final time. Gets through no problem. The gap continues to fall down, and I think he is starting to save his tires. So Augusto Sato Sharapa received the checkered flag and start a pole position for the future this afternoon. Jackson Deal will start him on, or join him on the front row on the outside of P2. Uh, AJ Ludd, the teammate, took us to Sato Sharapa, the top crowd US entry in P3. And Jackson Deal's teammate comes across in P4 on the MPG Cart Republic. Rounding out your top five, Brayton Heber, the private tier entry set to start in P5. So that will do it for the last heat race here this afternoon for your KA Seniors and KA Masters. Up next, we're going to go feature racing with your 206 Cadet and Sportsman. Ten minutes plus two laps coming to you next here live on Kart Chaser. This is the first round of the Indy Karting Challenge. So you finally want to get behind the wheel, huh? Yeah, I've been shooting for three years and I've never got to drive. Well, you're going to need some more gear than just your helmet. Why don't you go to shopakr.com? They got their inventory online and they'll ship it the same day if you order before 5.30 p.m. Eastern. They got shoes? Yep. Gloves? Yep. Rip protectors? Got those too. Can they make me go fast? No. Here at Acceleration Kart Racing, we've got everything you need to get on track. What happens next? Well, that's on you. Check us out online at shopakr.com.
And the engines have come to life for 206 Cadet and Sportsman as they are set to go. 10 minutes plus two laps for your feature this, or sorry, this morning, I should say. If you're watching and you watched previously or here at Whiteland and you're confused as to why we're feature racing, we're not that far ahead of schedule. However, what we're doing is we're breaking things up. So we have the morning session and the afternoon session. The morning session consists of the 206 Cadet and Sportsman, 206 Medium, 206 Junior, 206 Masters, and your KA Senior with Masters. In the afternoon, we'll run all other classes. So your micros, your minis, your 20, or sorry, your, uh, KA Juniors, your uh, other 206 classes and plenty more to go will be ran in the afternoon. Splitting up in between the two will be our kid cart program that we're going to aim to kick off here at 1255 scheduled so far. So we got the morning session, the afternoon. This is going to round things up for the morning session. So what's nice about this is if you maybe have obligations to do this afternoon, in your classes or in the morning, then no problem. You can come out and run, and then you still have your afternoon to do whatever you'd like. If you're running in the afternoon session, let's say you're a multi-sport athlete and you are uh, got a kid or a student who is in classes and has other stuff to do, no problem as well. You can come out and run in the afternoon as well. So we've got things set to go here for the first feature race of the 2024 season of the Indy Karting Challenge. You are watching this live on Kart Chaser. And again, you can uh, tune in to all the other races that they have here as well. They got a quad header going on this weekend. They have uh, here at Whiteland Raceway Park. They also have at AMP at Atlanta Motorsports Park. They got the Rotax Challenge out in Arizona. And they're also down in Houston at the second round of TSRS. So plenty of racing you can watch here all weekend long on uh, Kart Chaser. Uh, watching now is the exclusive content. So if you are a premium member, we appreciate your guys' support and what you're doing to help build and grow this company and this industry that we love and the crown jewel that we call of karting. And hopefully we can spread it just a little bit farther and make it bigger and bigger as the season goes on. So now let's see the first race here of the 2024 season. Kaysen Hendrickson will uh, set the pace here on pole position with Danny O'Gara in P2 on the uh, Outs, or sorry, that is Casey Henderson, and then you have uh, the rest of the field. Sorry, the timing system is confusing my brain, but it is Casey Henderson going to start on pole position. Green flag is out, and it looks like that is going to be O'Gara on the inside, going with Casey Henderson. Uh, Henderson now has the inside advantage, and it looks like O'Gara is going to be out in the marble, so to speak, there through the crossover corners. Is he going to slot into P2? He does, and there's still a little bit of uh, hustle and tussle going on there. Dominic Gaddis is up in that mix as well, along with Titus Roberts. And uh, I'm saying this correctly, I hope, but Will Fishington is up into uh, P number four, although he was falling back through the field. So that is your first lap, all still getting sorted back out. Out in front now, Casey Hendrickson on that AMAX Evo chassis in P1. P2 is that top cart chassis of Danny O'Gara in that second position. Then P3, you get to uh, 714 of Dominic Gaddis there on the MPG Cart Republic entry running in P4. P5 is Will uh, Fishington, or Fishington in that fifth position. Uh, so I think he maybe have had some trouble and fell back through the field so far. But your top three starting to uh, get a little bit of separation and space now from the rest of the field. And again, that is being led by Casey Hendrickson, AMAX entry out front, Danny O'Gara on that uh, top cart USA on his back bumper. Not too far behind, about four cart lengths runs. Uh, Dominic Gaddis on that MPG Cart Republic. So that's your one, two, three. And then Titus Roberts actually leads that second pack. And if you recall back to what I said before, this is 10 minutes plus two laps for about a minute and 20 in, or sorry, a minute and 30 in so far. So just under eight minutes and 30 seconds yet to go here at Whiteland Raceway Park. There's a good shot of your top two coming out of the uh, what used to be turn one in the old layout. Now goes down the extension into turn one, the new turn one over the tram lines, out of turn one over in the sweepers. It turns two and the double right hander turns two and three. O'Gara now on the back bumper of Casey Hendrickson now out of turns four, heading down the back stretch again into the left hander turn five, does long straightaway. O'Gara is going to have a good run here. Does he go to his back bumper? He's trying to get around. Well, he's actually going to give him a push now, trying to get some separation between himself and Dominic Gaddis there in that third position. So out of turns number uh, six, also known as Daytona Corner, they go over to the south side hairpin. O'Gara still working on that back bumper of Casey Hendrickson. Last time by, O'Gara did go purple, so he is registered as the fastest card on track at a 50.966. Uh, Casey Hendrickson, your leader, went a 
22.7. Again, the tires still coming up to temperature. Lap time doesn't mean a whole lot. It's just a reference point for us as uh, broadcasters so we know approximately what to look for here as they continue on as now the top two out in front. Henderson and O'Gara nose to tail. Gaddis there in the third position is trailing now what appears to be about a 1.2 second deficit between himself and O'Gara in that second spot. O'Gara not losing much time at all as he continues to push on the back bumper of Casey Hendrickson over into Daytona corner. Has a little bit of a peek to the outside line. Does he try for a crossover move here on the south side? No, he's going to stay nose to tail with your leader of Hendrickson out in front in that 202 AMAX entry on the Evo chassis. And then uh, O'Gara, like we're talking about, P2, Top Kart USA and Kart 467 close onto the back bumper Fenderson. These two drivers have, uh, this isn't the first race that they've had this season. O'Gara actually has been out on the uh, National and Regional Series. He picked up a win at the Scusa Pro Tour, uh, winner tour, I should say, at round two in Miami. So he's already had plenty of time on track. Both these drivers, I know for sure, competed at uh, Daytona Kart Weeks down at the end of last year, beginning of this year, at Daytona Motor Speedway. I think O'Gara may have uh, been able to pull out a win as that one as well, in case that Hendrickson was up inside the top five. Uh, most of that entire weekend. I think he finished inside the top five as well. So these two very seasoned so far. Some of these other drivers may be breaking off the rust as they're working their way through some lap traffic. Still knows the tail for the top two now as uh, they continue up the hill into the inner hairpin yet again as we're looking about six minutes to go now plus two laps. Four minutes in so far out of ten as we're now approaching lap number four to be completed this time by. Just a little bit farther behind in that third spot. Let's take a peek at Dominic Gaddis. He's running very competitive times to the top two, down by about two seconds in that front pack. However, he's slowly picking up the pace. He's only down by a tenth. Casey Henderson and O'Gara running about a 51.203 for Henderson, 202 for O'Gara. Dominic Gaddis, 51.384. So he's not too far off the pace. If something were to happen, if these two out in front decided to battle back and forth a little bit early. Uh, there's a chance that he could start to close that gap back down, and all he needs to do is get a draft or maybe a little bit of a push to make his way up the field is, oh, we got contact just in front of the scoring building, and hopefully that can get cleared out before uh, the rest of the field make their way through. As now here comes the uh, rest of the fields coming out of the final corner. Looks like they're going to get around that incident clearly as there's the two carts that are stopped in the middle of the tracks. So hopefully we can get them breaked up and uh, continue on underway as we're going to continue to watch the battle here for the top two of Hendrickson and O'Gara making their way into turns three and four as we're sorry, keeping an eye on this uh, incident out on track. It is right in the middle of the facility, so hopefully get these carts cleared quickly and get them out underway. There goes the officials and getting the carts cleared out. So that incident is now cleared and going to stay green all the way through. So let's switch back over and watch this battle for the lead out in front. Henderson continues to hold on to the lead. O'Gara into P2 last time by, uh, separated by not a whole lot as O'Gara came across right on the back bumper. And look at that. Third placement. Check the lap times. Dominic Gaddis starting to close the gap back down. 51.0 to O'Gara and Henderson's 51.2. So he went two tenths faster the last time by. He has now gone faster, uh, a closing the gap back down, I should say, although that previous lap did slow down. I think he slowed down a little bit more on that incident there as he went to 51.150. So it was down beneath the second, is now over two and a half. So 50.492 for Hendrickson, 50.488 for O'Gara. So Gaddis now has his work cut out for him yet again. However, there are still lappers out in front. If he can get around a little bit quicker than the leaders can, as now they're struggling with it over to Daytona corner. Hendrickson has looked to the inside. He can't get around. This is going to be good news for Gaddis. He's going to be able to close the gap back up. As there went Hendrickson, there goes O'Gara. Gaddis now arriving on scene. So if he's able to get around just a little bit quicker than the top two of this lap traffic, it could play to his advantage. As there's another lapper out in front. That's going to bobble the leaders again. Gaddis able to get around. No problem for that second lapper that was causing him problems. Gap was just over two and a half seconds. Now it's down to one. Lap times, he went about a second faster. He maintained his time from the previous lap. So he could be set sail. Uh, to take on the top two. He's got one more lapper to get around. He has a peek to the inside. Does he clear him? Yes, he does. Now he has the advantage of getting the toe from the top two. Don't count Dominic Gaddis out yet. Just under three minutes to go plus two laps. Still plenty of time. Now it looks like O'Gara not close enough to start pushing the back bumper of Case and Hendrickson just yet. And I don't think they know that Gaddis is starting to reel him back in if they look a little bit farther behind him. Uh, O'Gara, I don't think, is going to force the issue. He's probably going to continue to work together with Hendrickson to get a little bit of uh, spatial um, 
real estate, I guess you can say, between himself and Gaddis there in third. But let's check the lap times this time by. 51 was the previous lap for Gaddis there in P3. Hendrickson and O'Gara uh, running at about 50.5. So the gap maintaining where it's at, not dropping a whole lot. However, if something like that happens again with lap traffic, we could see a good battle there for third, or sorry, for second and third. So we're going to continue to watch now. Here's your top two. Hendrickson O'Gara, nose to tail, and Dominic Gaddis in the third spot got caught up in lap traffic. So that is going to cause that space to open back up again. It's going to be a two-cart battle for the win this afternoon unless something happens or Gaddis is able to close back up. Last time by, it was about a 1.5-second gap. I wouldn't be surprised if it was closer to two. As this time across the line, we we're looking at about one minute and 30 seconds plus two laps to go. Gap between the two, open back up, 2.5. So we're going to continue to watch Hendrickson and O'Gara out in front and it looks like Danny O might be trying to pull a crossover move into the entry of turn three. Not this time. Stays in the toe of Kaysen Hendrickson out in front. Now through the uh, left-hander of turn five heading over towards that back straightaway. O'Gara on his back bumper and uh, hasn't decided not to try to battle so far. He stayed with uh, Case and Hendrickson out in front, trying to see if he can't just push himself a little bit farther and farther away from the field. Looking back on the third placement, uh, just out the corner of my eye, it looks like Dominic Gatt is still getting held up with lap traffic, so he is struggling to get around, opening up that gap even more so as we're now looking at less than a minute this time across the stripe. It's going to be under 40 seconds, so next time by, look for two laps to go. We're quickly closing down on this battle for the lead as here comes O'Gara has a peek to the inside line does he have him here yes he does O'Gara able to get around closes right up to lap traffic here comes Hendrickson is he going to follow him or is he going to try to set a pick with the lapper he's going to follow him through both able to get her by on lap traffic O'Gara now sets out in front Hendrickson in the second position again anticipate two laps to go when they come across the stripe this time by down the back straightaway O'Gara pulls out about a two car length advantage over Case and Hendrickson there in the second position coming on the back stretch into the uh, south side hairpin for the third uh, to final time. Making their way up the hill. O'Gara out in front. Hendrickson there in the second position. He is able to close back up. Skids a little loose there on the entry of the inner hairpin. Up the hill they go. They get uh, catch back up to lap traffic yet again. They're able to get around. There goes O'Gara. There goes Case and Hendrickson. Hendrickson in the toe. Does he have enough to make a move here into turn one? No. Hendrickson going to stay right behind O'Gara, your leader. Coming over now into the uh, second and third corner for the second to final time. Making their way out of turns three and four. O'Gara looks to have a good line. Hendrickson runs a little wide there on the exit of turn four, the entry of five. Does he have that momentum on the back straightaway to close back up in the toe? As of now, no. He closes up right before the chicane, but isn't quite on the back bumper. Can't make a move this time the south side hairpin, although his best bet is probably to make a move on the last lap. Out of the south side, closes back up at a half a cart length down on your leader of O'Gara. Up into the inner hairpin they go. Lap traffic out in front. This could bobble them down just a little bit as O'Gara goes straight to the back bumper of the lapper, trying to find a way through. There goes O'Gara. There goes Hendrickson. White flag in the air one more time by him. O'Gara goes on the defensive down the inside. Hendrickson's going to have to roll the high line. Does he set him up for a crossover out of turn one? He gets to the point. He gets to the outside line. He's going to try to set him up again. Goes to the inside. Does he try it here into three? He does. Hendrickson up now onto the point. O'Gara still side by side. O'Gara now still side by side with Hendrickson over to turn five. Down the back straight away they go. Who's going to have it over to six? Looks like O'Gara. Hendrickson's going to have the toe coming out of Daytona. Out of Daytona corner they go. Over to the south side hairpin. O'Gara does not defend the inside line. Stays on the normal line. That's going to have to force Hendrickson around the outside. Hendrickson still has a chance here in this final hairpin. Does he take on the inside? O'Gara defends. Kaysen tries a crossover. Goes a little wide. He's got the run up the hill. Look for a photo finish. Get those cameras out. Hendrickson on the inside. O'Gara on the outside. Who's got it? O'Gara gets it over Hendrickson by one one hundredth of a second. So, Danny O'Gara, Kaysen Hendrickson, one and two. Dominic Gaddis brings it home in P number three. Austin Taylor made his way up the field into P4. William Taylor, or sorry, William Vetter into P5. So, I was going to round out your top five here for your 206 cadet and sportsman. Up next, we still have more feature racing to go. It is your 206 medium coming to you live here on Car Chaser.
commercial break. Are you looking for an advantage in your competition? Well, Car Class has done the hard work for you. We have traveled to your racetracks to give you the inside knowledge. So what does Car Class offer? We've got drone footage that captures the racing lines, visual markers for your braking points, acceleration zones, and the best overtake opportunities on your racetrack, pedal cam to show you where to brake and when to accelerate, and 360 degree footage to make sure you don't miss any parts on the racetrack. We've covered 13 racetracks in the United States. And Australia, you're up next. So visit carclass.com to get your track information. And welcome back as we are set to go green shortly for your 206 medium. 10 minutes plus two laps will be the distance here. Brian Gintheimer is set to start on pole position with Brenna Hanville in P2. Evan McCorkadale will start in the third position next to Kyle Landon. Eli Fox will start in P5 next to e or Levi Wilbur. Egan Day will start in the seventh position next to Brennan uh, Lonrick in P8. Raldoff uh, Galdick will start in P9 next to Brayton Johnson. That'll round out your top 10 as they're now coming through the dog leg now. Set to go into the train, uh, tram line. So that'll be Hanville and Gensheimer set to take the green here this afternoon as they're slowing it down to almost a walking pace now over into the tram lines. This is a beautiful start here. Should be no question. Green flag is out. Gensheimer is going to take him into turn one. Let's see. Can Hanville roll that outside line? Well, he's actually down one position. Is he down two? Well, it looks like no. He is only down one. That is going to be McCorkadale from the four spot up now into P number three. So that is your one, two, three out in front. Gensheimer, Hanville, uh, sorry, Gensheimer, McCorkadale, then Hanville. One, two, three, four spot. I believe it's Keegan Day in that top cart running up in the, uh, what's now the fourth position after starting in seventh. Eli Fox finds himself down into six after starting up NP number five. And it looks like, I believe that is Levi Wilbur now into the fifth position. So does your top six run down that in the first pack. Start to form in that second pack is uh, what appears to be an AMAX entry of the 2-6 uh, of Brayton Johnson now. So Johnson is up into P7, King of Day, not too far behind him. Correction, P4 is actually Kyle Landon. So Kyle Landon is there in the fourth spot. That is not Day. Uh, Day is actually back into P8 side by side for the second place, though, as there goes McCorkadale under fire from Brandon Hanville. So Hanville putting the pressure on for second place. McCorkadale lets him have it. He had his hand up in the air, almost saying, let's work together here so we can close back up to Gensheimer out in front. So he's going to stay nose a tail now. And it almost appears Kyle Landon might make this a three-car tango for the second position. They could use this to their advantage and close back up to Gensheimer out in front. However, if they battle back and forth for that second position on back, that is going to allow the gap to grow from your leaders out in front. Up through the final couple of corners they go. Top four slowly starting to bunch back up. Gensheimer last time by has uh, about two tenths 
over Hanville McCorkadale, Landon not too far back, and then Eli Fox also in the mix as well, right behind Fox. You got Levi Wilbur, so he could close up and make that a uh, two three packs out in front, one massive six pack if that second group is able to close back up to the top three. Meanwhile, Hanville out in front, down by about a half a car length on Gensheimer in P1 as he's on his back bumper, getting a little bit of help there from McCorkadale now. Over into the south side hairpin, no passes made inside the top three. There's still nose to tail, although that second pack slowly starting to close back up, being led by Kyle Landon out in front. He's getting some help there from Eli Fox on that new gen entry in the fifth position. Levi Wilbur on the privateer, I believe that is an OTK, not too far back as well as Wilbur in the sixth position is playing a boost there for that second pack, trying to make it a six cart tango if we're able to close it back up. I say that, but there goes Eli Fox and off the the track goes Kyle Landon. Landon gets turned around the exit of turn one, able to uh, keep it off the racing line. Good car control from him as he sent it through the grass. So now that is going to push Kyle Landon way back the order in the tail end of the field. Eli Fox now up into fourth, and he has no support from behind and no draft out in front. He's got to put his elbows up if he wants to close up to the top three. Although, bad news for him, the top three, they have decided to not race so far. They're saying nose to tail, trying to just create as much real estate as it came between the two. I say that, but there goes Hanville. Dead on the inside, getting pushed around from Gensheimer. And now McCorkadale in the third spot, giving support to Gensheimer, who's trying to keep him back up into the mix. So now Fox just might have an opportunity to make it a four-car battle for the lead. So now Cal Hanville out up in front. There's a lapper almost off the racing line, goes to uh, the top leaders, as I believe the lapper is trying to point the lead group by. Didn't see where they were coming from as now he's letting the rest of the field. There goes Fox, and there goes uh, Wilbur, and right behind Wilbur uh, is Brayton Johnson, I think. So they're all able to get around, and now the top three still bunched up. Fox now getting reeled in by Wilbur and Johnson, so that is two three-packs out in front. Your top three being led by Hanville, then Gensheimer and McCorkadale, one, two, three. We're about six minutes to go, as about four minutes have been completed. So six minutes plus two laps of racing still yet to come here for your 206 medium. This time across the line, lap number four completed. Hanville still P1. Here comes McCorkadale with the peak on the inside for the second spot. Does he take it from Gensheimer? Does Gensheimer give it up? They're still going to go side by side. I think Gensheimer may have dipped a wheel, but he is going to yield the spot. So Gensheimer falls back into third. He's going to have to work with McCorkadale to close back up to Hanville out in front. So the top three have now shuffled places. Uh, Hanville P1 after starting in the second spot. Gensheimer back into third after starting in P1, and McCorkadale after starting in fourth finds himself into the second spot. Let's check the gap between McCorkadale and Eli Fox. That is your third and fourth placement. Eli Fox currently trailing by about 1.6 seconds to McCorkadale, about 1.9 to your leader of Hanville out in front, and I believe they are starting to close the gap back down. That's not going to help them, though. Brandon Johnson up one more position, saying, hey, let's work together. However, if you're battling back and forth like this, you're kind of just going to stall your momentum out. Last time by McCorkadale, he went set purple in the fastest lap of the field of a 49.513. He is pushing the leader of Hanville. Last time by, Johnson went a 49. Point seven, so two tenths slower. Eli Fox went to fifty point three due to that pass. So if that second pack can just calm it down a little bit here for the next two minutes, they might be able to close back up to the top three. However, let's see if the top three decide to battle now, or if they're going to wait until they see double sticks up in the air. We're about four minutes and forty seconds to go, so it's starting to close down to the uh, second half part of this feature event right now. If you're two six medium, Hanville McCorkadale one two Gensheimer down by about a cart length now to your top two. Johnson now up into the fourth spot with Fox right behind in fifth. Wilbur in six. So that is your top six rundown and the two three packs out in front. They're not closing the gap down a whole lot. About 1.6 seconds separates Fox, or uh, sorry, Gensheimer, or Fox from Gensheimer, I should say. Although I believe that should be Brayden Johnson up in front of Fox there for fourth. So are they closing down that front pack? Kind of. Mathematically speaking, yes. However, with less than four minutes to go, they're uh, they're coming to crunch time now if they want to try to close up to the top leaders. But as of now, if you look at that front pack that you see on your screen, McCorkadale on the back bumper of Hanville, well, he's pushed the gap away from uh, Gensheimer there in the third position. So Gensheimer's just hoping for something to happen in the top two so he can stay in the toe. He is in the toe as of now, but they're slowly starting to reel, uh, or pull away, I should say, from Gensheimer in third. Who is reeling him in is Eli Fox, Brayton Johnson, Levi Wilbur. 
they're still running a little bit slower times, about two tenths slower than your leader out in front of Hanville and McCorkendale. But if they are able to close back up to Ginsheimer, they could get that toe from the fourth placement to close them back up. We're sitting at about three minutes to go, plus two laps, so there's a decent amount of time left. Not a whole lot, not quite crunch time if you're in that second pack, but you've got to just hope right now that the top two decide to go back and forth or that they make some sort of mistake to get Gensheimer back up into it. And Gensheimer can slow that pack back down by making some passes. So we're going to watch now McCorkadale in the second spot. McCorkadale, who's not afraid to be aggressive, and he's also not afraid to play the long game. We know he's okay with sitting in that second spot and waiting until he sees the double sticks in the air. Although, if they can get a gap from Gensheimer, might wait till the last lap to make his move if Gensheimer's not going to be right there to pounce on any uh, momentum that may be bobbled from that front pack. Down over into turn one, still Hanville out in front, McCorkadale P2. McCorkadale a little loose there on the exit of turn one. That is going to uh, slow down the momentum of McCorkadale. I don't think he knew where Hanville was going to end up on the entry of turn one. So now Gensheimer's starting to close back up. About two cart links down from your top two. Still decent separation now between uh, Johnson, Wilbur, and Fox, although I think Fox is leading that group, and getting time in the third position, roughly about 2.3 seconds. So I think that second pack is all but to the wayside here with two minutes and two laps to go if, and a big emphasis on the if, McCorkadel does not try to battle with Hanville until the double sticks are up in the air. That second pack is settled back down. It's still Fox out in front of that second pack and fourth. Johnson P5, Wilbur in six. This time across the line, they came across at about 1 minute and 45 seconds remaining, plus two laps. So let's see it now. Hanville and McCorkadale still knows the tail. They've opened up about a half a second over your third placement there of uh, Gensheimer, who's, again, kind of in the toe. He's about to fall out of it. Once they two start battling out in front, that could allow that gap to close back down. However, he's going to have to, can, uh, he's going to hope he can get up there quickly as we're now looking at about a minute and 10 seconds to go as they enter the south side hairpin for the 10th time. 10 laps completed this time across the stripe. And I believe there's going to be about four laps remaining here this afternoon. Hanville still out in front. McCorkadale still in the second spot. Gensheimer kind of closing back up with that draft there on the straightaways. They're just got to hold on to it in the corners. This time across the line, we are less than a minute to go. So about two laps until we see two to go. So about roughly four, three or four laps remaining. I don't think McCorkadale is going to try anything until he sees the double sticks in the air. They got the separation about seven tenths is what McCorkadale has on your third placement of Gensheimer. Anvil has about a second over Gensheimer now. So look for these two to wait until they see the double sticks in the air and or white flag. In that second pack, a quick update on that. Fox and Johnson have kind of pulled away from Levi Wilbur. Wilbur down by about four cart lengths in that battle for the fourth position. And I think if you're Gensheimer down the third position, you got to be careful. Look behind you and check your gap because it looks like Fox and Johnson are slowly starting to reel them back in. Double sticks in the air. Let's see what happens here. Does Hanville defend this first lap or does he wait? Over to turn one. He doesn't defend. That opens up the door and allows McCorkadale to take the lead. So McCorkadale out in front. And I think that's going to start to slowly close the gap back up with here in the next lap and, or sorry, yeah, lap and a half to go as they make their way over into turn five now. Down this back straightaway, heading over into turn six. McCorkadale has about a two car length advantage over Hanville in P number two. So bad news for Gensheimer, Fox, Johnson, and Wilbur. And because of the fact that McCorkadale is pulling away, they're not battling back and forth. They're not going to slow the momentum of the pack back down. However, there is a lap car out in front of McCorkadale, and I think they're going to catch him just at the end of the hill. They might be able to get him on the straightaway up to the final corners, and it looks like no, it is not going to slow the speed of him. They're going to catch him on the main straightaway. White flag in the air one more time by. There goes uh, Hanville around the lapper as well. So top two made it around. Third place and against Heimer not able to. So this is going to be a two-card battle for the lead. Can Hanville close back up in the next lap? This is what the questions are all going to be. Eli Fox and Brayden Johnson, they're out of it. They're battling for P4. So those two are going to duke it out there to see who finishes in fourth and fifth. But let's see this right here on your screen. On the left-hand side, McCorkadale, Hanville on the right. 
knows the tail through Daytona for the final time. Anvil not going to have enough out of Daytona. McCorkadel does defend for a moment. That's going to slow him back down. Possible last pass here into the inner hairpin or up the hill. Does he take it now? Does McCorkadel defend? Kind of. Hanville goes for the crossover move. Not going to be enough towards the top of the hill. He can go out to side by side, but it's not going to be enough. Evan McCorkadel takes the checkered flag for the first feature event for 206 Medium. Anvil comes across in P2, Gensheimer P3, Johnson in P4, and Eli Fox rounds out your top five. So that'll do it for your 206 medium feature event. Up next is your 206 junior set for their 10 laps plus or 10 minutes plus two laps feature event. Following that, we're gonna get into 206 Masters, followed by KA Senior and Masters. Then after that, we'll do our kid cart program before we get to the second half event of the weekend. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. We still have more feature racing coming to you live here on Cart Chaser. And here we go now for your 206 Junior Final set here for this. Uh, I believe there's going to be two more events to go for your morning events before we get over to the kid car program. But now let's watch these top two. Holden Harder, who started the second position, is now up into P number one. Christopher Yotze is into P number two. Yotze started on pole position, now finds himself right behind Holden Harder in P2. Uh, Lucian Laser is up into the fourth position behind, if I'm not mistaken, that should be Colin Harden in P number three. The double uh, new gen Haas chassis entries there in the third and fourth position. And the two behind them is Spencer Comby and Evan Patton. So that is your field rundown of the five carts, or sorry, six carts set to take the green here this afternoon. So a lot rolling in the books. Again, these are 10 minutes plus two laps. 
And at the end of the 10 minutes, they see double six in the air. Once the two laps are up, checker flag comes out, and how they end up running at the end of that uh, event is how they finish. And after we get done with 206 Junior, we're going to go on to 206 Masters, followed by KA Senior and KA Masters. After that, we will then go into our kit cart program. Following will be all the afternoon classes. So we're going to sit and watch now with the 206 Junior. Again, six carts in total running here. Holden Harder out in front. Christopher Yotze up into P number two. They are nose to tail. They got a decent amount of separation between themselves and Evan Patton and Lewisian Laser running in third and fourth. Roughly about 2.1 seconds is the difference between Yotze and Patton there in the third position. Nose to tail, they go across the stripe. Sorry, Yotzi was able to get back around Harder now as they're now nose to tail. Actually, they're not. That is still Yotzi and P2. Harder out in front. So as we continue to watch now, the back and forth battling happening out in front between Yotzi and Harder. Uh, quick announcement for all kid carters participating in the kid cart program. We're going to do a meeting for you guys up here on the deck of the timing and scoring tower. So all kid carts, make your way up to the deck of the timing and scoring tower for you guys' this quick meeting before we get you guys going for your kid cart program. As we now watch on track, Christopher Yotzi holding Harder. The year one and two battling out in front. Yotzi was able to get around harder and now is opening up about a two. Count that three car length advantage out in front. Heading over into uh, what appears to now be a Daytona corner to the south side hairpin for the third time as we are now going to be completing lap number three as we have six minutes and 40 seconds yet to go here out of 10. And again, once that clock strikes zero, where it's going to be double sticks in the air for two laps to go this afternoon. Down towards the start, finish straight away, heading over into turn number one. Yotzi still leads the way over into turn number one. So Yotzi is still out in front over Harder in P2. Yotzi running on the Amax Evo chassis in P1. Harder, I believe, is a privateer on a Burrell Art in that second position. Six minutes to go out of 10 plus two laps. So that is all the time that we have remaining here for your 206 Junior uh, final event. Again, after this, we go into 206 Masters, followed by KA Senior with KA Masters. So we're going to continue to watch this clock wind down a little bit stagnant all throughout the field uh, with Yotzi and Harder still running one and two. About two tenths is all the separation between them. Last time by Harder went at 50.693. Yotzi went at 50.8. Two, five, and there they are on your screen heading out of turns three and four on that run down to turn five. And let's watch them all the way for a lap through as we get a feel for this layout. This is the back stretch heading down over into that quick little chicane. There's a good shot of the static camera of that chicane leading into the Daytona banked corner. They go down the short little back stretch over into what we call the south side hairpin. That is all uphill out of banking, so you can carry a lot of speed. They make the short climb up the hill before they go over an off camber uh, right hander down into the inner hairpin again a little bit of banking then they start this climb back up the hill the two final lefts they make their way towards what we call the dog leg they kind of drop down on this bowl go back up this hill down this back straightaway as we uh, just lost the leaders off camera over into turn number one so we'll finish this lap out here uh, with pollution laser there they are now their top two switching back over through turns two and then they get to this three and four complex which is kind of a quick left right before we get set up back again for this turn five back straightaway so this is a familiar layout to some. I believe this is what CKNA ran and along with the uh, Route 66 last year. I think it's one of the fan favorites that we have. I think actually fan favorites is going the opposite direction. Hopefully we can work that into the layout for you guys later on this weekend, or sorry, later on this season. But again, 
We've got some new upgrades coming to the track this year. We're still trying to uh, work through everything and make sure that we can get this tip-top shape as quick as possible moving forward. Things this weekend have gone so far so smooth. A couple of instances in the morning. Uh, I believe everyone is... Uh, happy with this layout so far this weekend and again we're all working through these uh growing pains so to speak that we've been going through as we continue to watch the top uh two making their way around the facility we're looking at about three minutes and 40 seconds so far out of 10. again once that clock expires we'll see two laps to go six minutes and 20 seconds have been completed so far two laps are going to be presented here shortly in about three minutes and 40 seconds Holding harder, able to make a move and take the point there from Kisser for UT as they're making their way through now as we continue to watch these guys go back and forth here for the top spot. So here with about 30 seconds uh, seconds plus two laps to go, your top two out in front, holding harder, leads over Christopher Yotzi out in front, uh, making their way now over into turn number five. And it looks like Yotzi now on the back bumper of holding harder as they make their way over that quick chicane over to Daytona corner now, heading towards the south side hairpin. Does Christopher have anything for him now over in the south side hairpin? Looks like no. He's going to stay in the toe out in front. We're approaching now at about 10 seconds. It's going to be close, but I think they're going to get two laps to go here at the line. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Two laps will be presented as a time expired just before they got to the line. So two laps to go now for this top two. Holden Harder is going to have to hold off a little bit longer over Christopher here in the next uh, about lap and three quarters. So now what is Christopher trying to make his move? He's close on the back bumper of Harder now over in that quick little uh, right left complex of turns three, four. Now out of turn five, down the back straightaway. Yotzi just now getting into the toe, but it looks like hold, uh, Harder has just enough to hold on out of Daytona. Does he? Ha uh, 
Going to have to go on the defensive here. No, he's going to stay in line. Looks like Yotzi did not try to make a move there on the inside. Up the hill they go. For the second to final time, over into that inner hairpin. A good passing opportunity and a good shot here of uh, what we call eye level of the field. Down towards the back straight away they go. White flag in the air one more time by. Does Holden go on the defensive into turn one? A little bit, but not a whole lot. He's going to hold off Christopher just a little bit longer. Christopher, though, can set up for an over-under here. Does he try it? Over into turn three. And he does not. He's going to go side by side as Yotzi now is going to be still in the toe coming out of turn number five. Down the short little back straightaway over in the chicane. Harder on the defensive now. He's not going to open up the door at all over the chicane. Now through Daytona they go. Christopher is going to have a run out of Daytona. Does he try it now? Harder goes on the defensive. Tries to swing back up. Can't quite have, uh, doesn't quite have the real estate for it. As he continues out in front, Christopher's going to have one more dive bomb move here. Can he get it done? Holden defends a little bit. It, but not going to be enough, and I believe it is going to be holding harder, holding off the rest of the field to take the checkered flag and the win here this afternoon for 206 Junior. Christopher Yotzi comes across in P number two. Lewisian Laser in P number three now. How about this for a first time podium finisher? Lewisian Laser in that new Jen Haas chassis entry comes across to receive his first podium in P3. Evan Patton in P4. Spencer Comby finishing in P5. And then Colin Harden finishing in the sixth position. So that'll do it for your 206 juniors. Up next is your 206 masters. And then following that will be your KA senior, K. AA Masters all coming to you live here on Car Chaser. We're at a commercial break.
And here we go, your 206 Masters set to take the green here this afternoon, and they will. Down into turn number one, it is Geist holding over. I believe that is Dietz now getting shuffled back into third. Here comes Troy Tony on that new gen entry there with the Haas chassis up into P number two. P3, the privateer of Adam Dietz to start up in the second spot. Just behind him, one of his good buddies, Derek Hastings, another privateer in P number four. Leading out in front, though, is Matt Geist. Uh, the uh, co-founder of Geist Engines with himself and Derek Hastings before they traded it off and sold the rights over to uh, New Gen themselves. They said they think they found a good home for it, that they continue on, and I believe that is the case because the uh, Ghost Engines continue to put out some really good performance here in the Midwest, and especially here at what they call their home facility of Newcastle Motorsports Park is now the top three, making the way across the board. And how about that for a lead for Matt Geist out in front, Troy Tony under fire to turn two. Adam Dietz has got his elbows up. They're going to go side by side. Dietzy now goes up into P2. Derek Hastings sees his opportunity. He tries to get a nose in for P3. Still tries it. Not quite enough. And he's going to follow right behind Troy Tony, who's holding on to that third spot. Meanwhile, out in front, Matt Geist, the last time by, had a lead of about uh, half a second. I wouldn't be surprised if that grew a little bit more, although Adam Dietz looked like he put it in a second gear on that back straightaway and is closing up now onto the back bumper of Matt Geist. Up the hill they go, down into the inner hairpin for the first time to complete lap number one, this time across the stripe, as uh, now they're going to see what the gap is between your second place now of Adam Dietz and Matt Geist out in front. Sorry, this is the second time by. Adam Dietz has now closed it down to about four tenths. He went purple last time by, two tenths faster than Matt Geist out in front, and he continues to close up quickly onto Geist. Now down to about two cart lengths separates himself and the leader out in front. Then let's switch back over to this battle for third that you're watching now. That's Troy Tony and that uh, new gen entry up into P3 just behind him. Derek Hastings, a privateer in P4. They're not quite closing up into the battle for the lead that we see out in front with Matt Geist and Derek Hastings. However, if they are able to link up, so to speak, and work with, the, uh, work with each other, they could close back up to that front pack. There is a 66 in the second spot of Adam Dietz out in front is a 531 of Matt Geist going nose to tail. So Dietz has successfully closed back up to your leader. Last time by, Dietz was purple at 51.08. Let's see what it is this time by. He goes about three tenths faster that lap. Geist went a 50.812. Dietz went a 50.584. Gap now, it was about half a second, down to two tenths between the two out in front. And Dietz, I think, might try to make his move early. All he wants to do is try to hold Matt Geist to bay. Geist has a lot of laps here at Whiteland. He's very consistent. He knows how to run up in front, not only in this Masters class, but also last year and the year before when he was running in the senior division. He ran senior light and senior medium, and he would always be up in that front mix. Came out and run Masters, would walk away from the field. Now he's got competition. Adam Dietz, previous years, would run in the 206 medium and 206 heavy classes. He uh, became the age of able to run in the Masters category and now finds himself up with uh, one of his longtime friends and competitors here at Whiteland of Matt Geist out in front. Troy Tony is uh, someone who I believe got back into karting in the recent years uh, with the new gen team, finds himself into that third spot. He went purple for a moment before they got switched off to Brian Williams in the seventh position. And Williams is caboosing that front pack. They're all spread out. However, Williams is right on the back bumper of Tom Harleman. They're trailing off just a little bit behind Dare Casings in fourth. And uh, Williams, who is running now in the new Gen Haas chassis, he last year ran, or made the switch, I should say, from Swift over to new Gen. He was trying to find a chassis that worked for him. I was talking to him last year. He said the Swift worked for him really well, but he just wanted a little bit more. He said that the uh, Swift cart, uh, his driving style is very on the front end. He said, I like a cart that has a lot of bite in, and I can slide the back around. He said the Swift had it, but he wanted to just experiment a little bit more. He tried the new Gen. He seems to like it. He likes the team. He stayed with them. He had a good run last year when he finally himself up inside the uh, top five battle almost every single weekend. Now finds himself in seventh trying to close up the battle as well. Something else about Brian Williams, every day he makes the commute from uh, Louisville up to here for every race weekend. So if you think you had an early commute by waking up at about five or six this morning, imagine how long it would take for a two and a half hour drive from Louisville across the state line up the joyous route that is I-65 here to Whiteland, Indiana. And he finds himself now in the seventh position, like I said, running close there with Tom Harleman trying to see if they can't work their way back up towards the front. Let's watch the battle for the lead as now Matt Geist, your leader, is uh, trying to work around lap traffic with Adam Dietz right behind him. They continue to run nose to tail 
over into the inside hairpin and up the hill they go as we are now looking up almost halfway about five minutes in five minutes to go before we get the two laps to go so they're going nose to tail there for the front look for Dietz he's either going to make the move and try to hold uh, Matt guys to bay if the opportunity is there and or he is going to stay behind him and just wait for the time to go down before he makes his move Troy Tony he's running about the same times as your leader of Matt Geist out in front Geist is running a 50.548 Troy Tony running a 50.552 Adam Dietz is not the fastest card on track but he is the fastest of those three of a 50.305 Fastest driver on the field so far, still Brian Williams wearing that 50.099. Last time by, he was also the fastest car again with that 50.196. So not his best time that he's put in so far, but that previous lap, he was the fastest car on the grid. He was able to get around Tom Harleman, so count uh, Williams up into fifth, Harleman back into sixth, and he is now on the back bumper of Derek Hastings. Hastings running about a half a second slower than Troy Tony in third, uh, roughly about four tenths slower. Then Adam Dietz in second, about six tenths slower than your leader of Mac Ice out in front. So if Williams, if he can get around Hastings, he might be able to work with them to close back up to the field, or he might be content since he still has some time of going to the back bumper and trying to push him up towards the front. There they are in the uh, back shot of your view. Uh, there's your two leaders going by, and Brian Williams, yes, was able to get around Hastings. Actually, looks like he launched himself around Hastings on the outside line, and he might be on his way to closing up the battle for the third position. There's your top two, though. It's in question. Matt Geist and Adam Dietz running nose to tail. Last time by, Geist went a 50.124. Dietz won a 50.34 and some change. This last time by, Geist won a 50.316. Adam Dietz went purple. 50.033 for your second. Now first placement as Dietz was able to make that pass over to turn one. They're still going to go door to door. And now here comes Geist trying for the pass back on Dietz. Dietz on the outside. Geist on the inside. They're still going to go door to door. There's your third placement. Troy Tony on that new gen closing back up. He almost has a nose in the battle for the top three. Third Daytona corner, they go. Beautiful shot there through the banking as uh, Geist and Dietz knows the tail. Now Troy Tony, who is running almost identical times as the top two, do that battle for the lead, now finds himself up into the picture. So count that three-cart battle for the lead as Dietz went by on Geist. Geist says, nice try. I'm going to take it right back from you. Troy Tony says, thank both of you. So now I'm up in this battle for third. So they continue down on the back straightaway. Here comes guys. Now here comes Troy Tony. Huge push over into turn one. Troy Tony now up into second. Matt uh, Dietz back into third. So guys out in front getting now a push from Troy Tony. Three car battle for the lead. And keep an eye on the two car tango that is Williams and Hastings. They both see what's happening out in front. And they decided to work together on it and try to close back up. This battle continues on here for the next two minutes plus two laps. We might be able to see a five car battle for the lead. That's a large ask. But it is a possibility here at WRP with how tight of a bull ring this track is. There is your top three. That is the 531 of Geist out in front. Then you get to the 24 of Troy Tony, now back into third. And then Matt, uh, Adam Dees running in now the second position. So nose to tail and working together for the second spot is... Dietz in P2 and Troy Tony there in third. They're trying to close back up to Matt Geist, who is leading the way out in front, has about a two cart length advantage. Last time by, Matt Geist went a 50.450. Adam Dietz went a 51.021. So he's running a little bit quicker than the uh, two in the second and third. And it looked like Troy Tony dipped a wheel coming out of turn four and that uh, bobbled his momentum just a little bit. Good news from Adam Dietz there in second as he's able to use that toe and close back up to now your leader of Matt Geist. Last time by, Geist was six uh, tenths of a second exactly faster than Adam Dietz. I think now it's going to drop down to about four, maybe even three across the stripe. Let's check the gap this time, and it's about 3.61. Troy Tony down by about a second on your leader, seven tenths down on your second placement of Adam Dietz. So let's look at this battle here for the fourth, fifth, and sixth spots, and it appears that not only has Brian Williams pulled away from that battle with Derek Hastings, but also Tom Harleman got around. I think Derek Hastings may have come in or had an issue because I'm looking out on the track and I don't see him right now. So Hastings finds his, uh, is going to drop down the order. He's currently registered in seventh 
but I think he may have pulled in a little bit earlier or came off the track somewhere. So fortunate to see, hopefully see him later on this afternoon. Here is your top two as we are approaching two laps to go this time by. Dietze in P2 in that uh, gray and silver and blue. Cart number 66, your leader out in front. Matt Geis in that 531 white and orange with a black helmet. Down into turn one, does he go on the defensive? He takes a peek back and decides better of it. He continues normal racing line. Adam Dietz has got to keep that thing right in the draft of Matt Geis out in front. He needs to get everything he can to close back up to him. He probably won't try it this lap. He'll probably wait until the white flag is out. But keep an eye on that third placement, car number 24 of Troy Tony. He's in a good position right now if these top two start battling to close the gap back up. Maybe catch him off guard if they slow down more than what they're anticipating here. Over in the south side hairpin, Dietz does not make the move. And it looks like Geis did not go on the defensive as well. So guys still out in front. Dietze in the second position through the inner hairpin. No one makes a move here. A little bit of a defensive line there from uh, Matt Geis out in front. Nothing too major. This time across the stripe, there is the white flag for head flagman of Adam Boros out in front over into turn one. Geist does not defend, Dietz does not make the attempt, but he does close in ever so slightly to the back bumper of Geist. He's now down about a quarter of a cart length between the two of them. There's turn three, turn four complex. Now over to turn five. Dietz has to get a run here out of turn five in the toe. He gets a decent run. He peeks to the inside, doesn't take it here, over through the chicane. His final attempt is going to be now into these final two hairpins. As he tried the south side? No. He stays in line. He's going to have one maybe two more attempts. He's going to have to make an attempt here on the inner hairpin. He's got the run up the hill. Look for him to pop to the inside line. There they are, door to door. They're still door to door up the hill. Guys pops the wheel up. dc has got a runner on the outside. Photo finish possibly. Here they go across the stripe. And it's Matt Geist. Matt Geist gets it over Adam Dietz barely. One or 0 0.130 is what separates the top two. Troy Tony comes across in P3. Brian Williams with a hard charge up into fourth. Tom Harleman in P5. Keith, and, uh, Keith Owens in P6. Eric Patton in seventh. Corey Patterson in eighth. Derek Hastings ninth. And Nick Bailey rounds out your top ten. So that will do it for your 206 Masters. Up next is going to be your KA Senior along with Masters. That is the final race of this morning before we get things going with the Kid Car Program and then get things kicked off with the afternoon races coming to you live here on Kart Chaser. This is the first round of the Indy Karting Challenge here of the 2024 season live from WRP on the Kart Chaser. We're at a commercial break.
And let's see it here. For your K, a senior and master, master Augusto Santos Rapa starts in P1. Jackson Deal is now on the inside, and Jackson Deal up into the point. Does he have it now? Augusto Sharapa is now under fire. He tries to get a nose in over here into turn three, and he does take the point back. Jackson Deal is going to have to prevent from being under fire here from AJ Ludd in the third position, that Top Cart USA entry. And it looks like they're both going to lose a little bit of time now to Augusto Sato Sharapa there on that Top Cart USA entry as well. So it's a Top Cart out in front, Jackson Deal on an MPG. Uh, Cart Republic in P2, and then you get back into AJ Ludd, another Top Cart USA entry into P3, and then another MPG, Cart Republic into P4. Now count AJ Ludd up in the second spot. He's able to get around Jackson Deal, and now through the final corner for the first time is going to be Top Cart, Top Cart, MPG, MPG. Augusto Sato Sharapa, AJ Ludd, Jackson Deal, Lane Gibbs, Austin Fairfield, another MPG, uh, Cart Republic into P4. And just behind him, he gets to the privateer. Brayden Heber in the sixth spot. P7 goes to Baden Bennett, the uh, second. Another uh, privateer entry. It looks like some dust got kicked up over there on the short shoot between uh, turns four and five. And we have a driver stopped out of the cart. So hopefully everything is okay with them. Unfortunate to see someone is not going to complete the feature here this afternoon. Let's look at the gap between your leader of Augusto Sato Sharapa and A.J. Ludd in the second position. Right now, just under a second, about eight tenths of a second is the difference between the top two. Then Jackson Deal right behind A.J. Ludd in the uh, third position. The gap now opened up to about 1.020 for Augusto Sato Sharapa there. So it looks like Augusto might be able to set sail here unless A.J. Ludd can pick it up just a little bit more. Last time by, Augusto won a 44.825. A.J. Ludd won a 44.981. Jackson Deal in the third position won a 45.685. Austin Fairfield now up into fourth won a 45.817. So very close in times, but just a little bit faster out in front. We got so Sato Sharapa has about one tenth over his teammate of AJ Ludd. Coming to complete lap number two now as we still have eight minutes to go. So two minutes in, eight minutes to go, plus two laps, or just under eight minutes, I should say, seven minutes and 45 seconds, but who's counting? Plus two laps to go here. Jackson Deal last time by went purple, 45.575, so he is closing on uh, the back bumper of A.J. Ludd. Augusto Sato Sharapa out in front as actually his lead has dwindled now, down one-tenth to about nine-tenths of a second. So 44.719 for Augusto Sato Sharapa, A.J. Ludd 44.618. We're going to be talking about tenths of a second here is how you win and lose two seconds racing at Whiteland Raceway Park. This is a very tight track. Some might call it a bowl ring. It is just under a mile in length on the longest layout. It used to be about a half mile on the longest layout, so we've expanded it by about double. However, with the amount of corners that it has and just the layout that it is of itself, you got long sweeping corners. You got these newer parts of the track that's a little bit tighter from the original layout that we had dating all the way back into the 50s. So it's a good different mix of uh, uh, facilities. However, they got the most out of this track. Uh, when Andy and Sarah did the expansion, they said that they wanted a smooth racing track. They wanted to have a lot of flow, but they didn't want to lose a characteristic of being here at WRP. And I think this is the perfect layout for it. You got your fast parts, you got your slow parts, you got your straightaway that everyone so badly wanted. They gave them that and then some. And then you have the flow of itself. The old track used to flow like no other with the uh, tighter layout that it had. They've expanded that out. They've kept the same feel of it. And now we're seeing what was always meant to be here. Two cycle racing here at Whiteland Raceway Park. It's a little bit chilly, but that just means it's good racing. Engines put up better power when it's cold anyways, right? Who needs warm tires? 44.365, the fastest time for Augusto Sato Sharapa out in front. P2 for AJ Ludd, 44.4. 0 1 for P2. So he's down, losing time again. Down to 10th. About one second now separates the top two. P3 of Jackson Deal. He is uh, trying to close back up to AJ Ludd there for second. He went a 44.4. Three seven, so three one hundredths is how much he is off of your second placement of uh, AJ Ludd per lap. Although visually looking at it from the booth up here, it looks like he's slowly starting to close back up. All the while, AJ Ludd slowly starting to close back up to Augusto Sato Sharapa. Last time by, Sharapa went a forty four point three seven four. AJ Ludd forty four point four two six. And how about that new fastest time of the race? Jackson Deal goes purple, 44.324 for your third place with Jackson Deal. He's not going to take the fastest lap time overall. Uh, able to pick up a little bit of time between himself and A.J. Ludd. Again, we're talking about 
roughly five one hundredths faster than Augusta Sada Sharapa out in front. So these top three have stayed about equal spacing. Some might call it the accordion effect that you sometimes see where they'll spread out and then close back together. Right now it's kind of spread out and just maintained. That bubble is quite not popped, so to speak, so we haven't seen them close back down. However, going a little bit farther back, we have a good battle here for the four spot with Lane Gibbs, Brayden Heber, Carson Sater, and Bain Bennett II. That is the battle for the fourth position, currently being led by, if I'm not mistaken, that should be uh, Lane Gibbs in the fourth spot. P5 should go to Brayden Heber, P6 to Carson Sater, P7 to Bain Bennett II. So we'll keep an eye on that peripheral right now, but we're going to keep an eye on the battle for the top three. Sharapa still out in, P, uh, in the first position so far. He is running about the same lap times as the third place from Jackson Deal. A.J. Ludd down by about a half a second on both Sharapa and Deal in that third position. And I think we're quickly seeing that gap from second to third close down. Uh, again, up in the booth, it looks like equal spacing, but just a little bit of an advantage there to your third place from the Jackson Deal. How about this for new fastest lap time for P4, Lane Gibbs, 44.029. That is about, if I'm not mistaken, Two one hundred or two uh, two tenths faster than we saw before. At the same time, AJ Ludd almost matched his time with a forty four point oh eight one. So AJ Ludd in the second spot, something he found in that car in that last lap because he went about six tenths faster than Sharapa the previous time by. Sharapa went a forty four point six three oh. Maybe the track's starting to heat up that much. Let's see it this time across the line. What did Sharapa do? Forty four seven. AJ Ludd a little bit faster. Forty four five. Jackson Deal also went faster than Sharapa, but not as fast as A.J. Ludd of a 44.6. Lane Gibbs, 44.7. Carson Sater up into P5, 44.8. So visually looking on it right now, it doesn't look like A.J. Ludd is closing up that gap a whole, whole lot to Sato Sharapa. We're looking at about three minutes to go, just under three minutes, I should say, plus two laps remaining. So there is a decent amount of time, so to speak. In the seven minutes that they've been up track, they have done, well, they're about to complete, I should say, nine laps this time by. So they should have about six or seven more laps of racing to go here in the time frame that's given to the 10 laps plus two minutes as it looks like there's a caution out over in the south side hairpin as uh, Austin Fairfield pulls in. He had a good run. He was up there inside the top five. He was for a little while. He was running back in the seventh spot before he parked it. So Austin Fairfield, unfortunately, out for the future event. Good shot there of your leader of Augusta Sada Sharapa on the top cart USA entry running out of turns four and five. Uh, last time by, well, he picked the pace back up. He lost about six tenths of a, or picked up about six tenths of a second. So he's running the 44.062. AJ Ludd, 44.641. Jackson Deal, 44.177. So he's still a little bit faster than AJ Ludd in that second spot. He's trying to break up a one two finish there for the two Top Cart USA entries of Augusta Sada Sharapa and AJ Ludd. Jackson Deal on that uh, MPG I Cart chassis in that third spot last time by. Does he go faster? He did. He went about three tenths faster again than A.J. Ludd and about a tenth faster than Augusta Sada Sharapa leading the way out in front. But right now, he's going to have his hands full of trying to find a way around A.J. Ludd. The faster the category is, the harder it is to pass. And as of now, the KA100 class is the fastest ones that we have here at Whiteland Raceway Park. And I'll tell you what, it's one thing to close up to someone, but it's another to try to wait for a mistake or force an act, or sorry, force a pass out of someone and possibly wait for some sort of incident to happen. So as of now, all that Jackson Deal can do is try to get in the head of A.J. Ludd, learn what he's doing right now, figure out where is he faster, where am I faster, where is he slower, where am I slower, and try to make a move. The best opportunity to pass is obviously going down into turn one. However, with these K100 engines, they got a lot of pickup off the line, so you got to hope that you can send it in on a hairpin. Faster corners, you're going about the same speed no matter what the time difference is. So all you have to do is wait for those slower corners or for an opportunity just to open up and you can take advantage of and be prepared for it. So it's very hard to make a pass done here in this KA100 class as we continue to watch Augusta Sada Sharapa out in front. But we're keeping an eye on that battle for second. A.J. Ludd is now under attack from Jackson Deal. Up the hill they go into the inner hairpin again. And now Lane Gibbs a little sideways and able to get around A.J. Ludd. So count Ludd back into third. Jackson Deal up into second. So now it is a top cart, MPG top cart. You're one, two, three, and then another MPG in fourth, and then a GP cart running in fifth of Carson Sauter. 
So that is your top five rundown. This next time by, look for two laps to go here for Augusto Sadashirapa. Almost a picture perfect weekend so far. He got pole position and or sorry, started a little bit farther back in qualifying. Got pole position in the heat race. Started on pole for the future this afternoon, and he is going to have two more laps to make his way across the stripe to do a sweep of the uh, heat race and the feature here shortly. Looking at the battle for second, it looks like AJ Ludd slowly closing up that gap onto the back bumper of Jackson Deal running in the second position. Two laps are shown this time by for that man on your screen right there, Augusto Sadashirapa on the Top Cart USA entry. As he uh, ran a part season last year, uh, not was not in the state of Indiana most of the season, and actually found himself down in Florida most of the season, running uh, all sorts of cars. I believe he ran some open wheels, some different types of formula levels. Found his way back here at Whiteland every now and then to run a K100 race. Always was running up towards the front. Now he's trying to see if he can't win the first event back here for the 2024 season under the new championship name of the Indy Karting uh, Challenge. And right now he has had not much of a challenge so far as he's going to receive the white flag this time by the battle for a second though. Let's see if we can't take a peek on it on your camera. A little bit farther back here from your leader of Augusta Sada Sharapa. It's a two top cart and uh, MPG of AJ Ludd and um, in third and Jackson Deal in second. They are going side by side and duking it out here so far. There is your leader, but let's see if we can't get two Carlys behind him. There is your leader on the left-hand side. There's the battle for second, just off camera, on the back inside of it. Look at how much Jackson Deal is defending on AJ Ludd over to Daytona corner, and it looks like a peek down to the inside, and not gonna be a complete pass made there from AJ Ludd, but he's right there closing it onto it. So as he comes across the line, this is gonna be, no doubt, your winner of Augusto Sada Sharapa as he slows down uh, across the stripe and he's able to take as much time as he needs. He receives a checkered flag. There's the battle for second that we were talking about in question between the two that Jackson Deal was able to take the win over AJ Ludd for P2. And then Lane Gibbs able to get around Carson Sauter as they were going back and forth as well for the battle for fourth. So Real quick, your top five rundown. Augusto Sato Sharapa in P1, Jackson Deal in P2, AJ Ludd in P3, Lane Gibbs in P4, and Carson Sauter rounds out your field in top five. So that will do it for the morning program here with your 206 Cadet and Sportsman, your 206 Medium, 206 Junior, 206 Master, KA Senior, and Master. That is going to wrap things up for them. And then we got uh, now our kid cart program, which is set to go out at 12.55. We're going to start a little bit later than that. When they go out, we'll then go over to our afternoon program. Our afternoon program is going to be the same timeline that we saw before of the warm-ups, qualifying, heats, and final. And the ones running in the afternoon will be micro with many at the same time. 206 Heavy, 206 Supermaster, KA Junior, and 206 Light all set to come to you live here on Cart Chaser at Whiteland Raceway Park with the IndyCarting Challenge. So don't go anywhere. We're going to switch things back over from the premium content over to the free content here for warm-up and qualifying after the Kid Cart program. So again, after Kid Cart program, we're going to go back to the free content that you can watch with warm-up and qualifying. And then when we get to the heats and final, we're going to switch it back over to the premium content. So if you haven't already, or actually everyone watching here does have the premium content. So we appreciate you guys' support. We are going to pick things back up here shortly with the Kid Cart program. And still plenty of racing still yet to come to you live here on Cart Chaser. Brandon. Why are there all these charges for just over $200 from Acceleration Car Racing's website? That's because AKR gives you free shipping on orders of $200 or more within the continental US. Okay, but I thought you were just getting a pair of gloves. That's what, 70 bucks? But if I'm getting a new pair of gloves, I might as well get a new pair of shoes to match. And then on top of that, I'll get a neck brace because with the shipping, it's basically free. Yeah, I do not think the math checks out on that. Everything you need, all in one place, and shipped to your door for free for orders of $200 or more. Exclusions apply. Spend responsibly. Shop AKR.com.
I'm David Serra, 18 time Australian karting champion, and we're launching Kart Class. Car Class is an advanced digital training program that helps a driver who's just starting out in the sport all the way to the driver looking to win a national championship. In this program, you're going to be learning about how to find the ideal racing line and what an apex is. Braking and throttle markers, wet weather racing lines, and how to overtake other competitors. We target how to brake in the wet weather, and we look on the mental side of kart racing as well with our mental skills coach. At the completion of this program, you'll be lighting up purple sectors in qualifying, know where to defend on the opening laps, and how to pressure your opposition into mistakes. We teach you the tools to be resilient and how to get in the right frame of mind before a race. We look to complete the whole package by getting a strong mindset, a driving style to suit all conditions, strategizing your race, and getting the last 1% from your team. We'll teach you how to win the final lap of a race, drive in the wet like Max Verstappen, and creating the perfect bubble for yourself to mentally be in the zone. To find out more, click the link below.